Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the fourth edition of the EU and CIS Tier 2 Awards. I think we did 2020, 2021, 2022, and now 2023. Yeah, fourth edition. Four see, years. The me, first me. one was chalk. The audio was absolutely <laughs> terrible. See, see, me, in my infinite wisdom, believe mm. that because it's 2023 and we started in 2020, one. it's the third one. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I just know how to maths, apparently. I passed yeah. that when I was in school, so. <laughs> That's why we're still stuck in Tier 2, like these guys <laughs> <Hey>. are. <laughs> now, last, I think the last few times, we've had a few categories that, match up because obviously we, we prep our own um, players and we prep our own um, sort of matches and, and what have you but I I think this time there's a little bit more clear cut I feel like we should yeah. at least in theory have more together because there's a little bit more of, of I suppose categories that are easier to mention this time than previous yeah I, I do think this one's been a rather consistent year for the tier Definitely. 2 space I mean we've seen a very a very clear sort of definition of a lot of players that have sort of been called up over, over this year yeah. and, and, and they've done really well as a result so it makes a lot of the categories when it comes to picking out the best mm. particularly easy I think in my opinion and so I, I think you are right about this one I mean in general I think it's been a pretty good year for tier 2 players overall the number of teams that have sort of called up from the, from the scene itself mm. I think is been much more increased. I know in 2022 we saw a number of the academy squads really go ham, but even here in the tier two space, like it's just been s such a wonderful year, I think, for everybody. And first off, we can start with our beginning category of the day, which is the best young player. So this is any player played in the tier two scene that's 18 years or younger. So I want to know who you have for your second pick. So my second pick is probably no surprises. I guess some people might see this as a bit of a surprise okay. to a certain extent, but it's Donk. Yeah, um, so, it's a good pick. Yeah, I mean, look, it, for me, it came down to, to two very different players, and it was a case mm -hmm. of who I think I place above the other uh, okay. overall, right? And so for me, Donk was a guy who obviously captured everyone's attention in the uh, academy team that he was part of, Team Spirit, mm -hmm. um, and, and him and his core really did well. And he was a standout player, I think, for everyone. The yeah. whole core itself was fantastic, but even him, as of late, has been proving himself on that Tier 1 level. So for him, I think it's been such a, a, a great year in, in terms of what he's been able to do. I think he spent a little bit more time than my first place pick in the in the tier two space and in the academy team which is why i think i put him just i've literally just edged out my first place by like a tiny amount it's a very yeah. very tight category i think this year yeah it is and and for my second place i'm actually going to go with wakadia who who plays on a fairly veteran roster i mean you think about the eternal fire lads you've got zantares you've got Woxit, you've got major and you've got calyx those are four guys we've known for years and years mm. and years in the tier two scene and i think for wakadia i mean his land stats are really good this year averages a 1.10 rating and you've got to remember, you're a supportive piece on that roster. You you can't be a star player when you've got Zantaras and Woxing on that team. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that Eternal Fire with Wakadia in the roster did really well at the Pro League. Yeah. So, so with having him yeah. in that roster, I mean, it, it was a team as well that we've sort of looked at and we've wondered where can they really build into, mm. right? What are the options available for the Turkish super team when you're not quite hitting the results that you wanted to see, especially last year, sure. right? Well, this year, Wakadia seems to have been quite the answer for them. Yeah, and I mean, again, just coming up from the academy team, getting that call up, I mean, he's started as a stand-in. I think he was there for a few months as a quote-unquote stand-in before getting that official signing. Uh, he plays in difficult roles. He plays hard anchor a couple of uh, a couple of uh, maps, like especially hard, um, on Nuke. Um, and he performs on LAN. Uh, even recently, I mean, they played a couple of weeks ago in, in ASL Challenger Yonkaping. And even even in the entire round, he was just behind Zantares. Um, so I think for Wakadia, really strong year. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that he has an even better year come uh, 2024. Yeah, I'm solid pick. I, I do appreciate mm. that, but but my first pick, I imagine we might have a very similar sort of uh, uh, first place in the, well, this one. And my first place for young player of the year has got to be Jim Pat. That's so troll. <laughs> really? Well, he's not tier two. I mean, I can't, he spent most of the year in, in the seven XD, months. Though. Still. He spent that's, that's seven so, months out as well. That's so, the majority of the year, in my opinion. Yeah. And you think about what he was able to do within that, right? He yeah. established himself, much like how Donk established mm. himself in, in the academy Very team. similar pathway. Very similar pathway. But then he went on to not only do that, to win the last ever CSGO championship in ESL Pro League. And, you know, again, this is the sort of key defining factor between sure. my first and second. Donk just won Bet Boom Dutcha, which, good, well done, obviously. A hell of a grand final, by the way. Um, but... In my eyes, EPL is a much more prestigious trophy. It is. So for him to go from that academy side and, and also with the backing surrounding him as well with, within Maus mm. to go on win that tier one trophy, become the last ever champion of CSGO, it's a hell of a story for him. And I, I think that he's done quite a lot to earn that, which is why I think he's my first place pick. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I would debate it only on the fact that even in Maus NXT, they didn't really play at a very high level. They did not often play teams in the top 30. That iteration of his team kind of struggled on LAN, didn't have the best of online results. And I mean, now he he's got the cool. one LAN, didn't he? What, yeah. 
yeah, one land where he went 0 and 2 in maps, and then you then get the call up. So for me, it's one of those difficult ones because he's he's has spent a few months now playing in the tier one scene. Um, you mentioned Donk as your second. He's my first. I think Donk is an unbelievable player. Uh, I mean, the the fact that he has a higher rating on LAN and mainly against Tier 1 teams than he does online is really stretching the bow. I mean, 1.33 rating on LAN this year, 1.29 rating online across over 200 maps played. And look at what happened in that grand final. You mentioned the, the banger it was. Uh, we saw Spirit down 0-2 versus mm -hmm. VP. He ended up bringing it forward. He dropped nearly 90 kills in that series. Averaged, I think, 18 kills a map. And won it uh, three to two, um, reverse swept the, the best of five on LAN, and he actually now becomes the second youngest HLTV MVP in history um, wow. by three months. So Sergey is the number one, and then Donk is now three months later in the age gap who's taken the youngest one. I mean, look when Kassad when Kassad gets promoted to a, an, a, a coach role once again, he's like, "How much is Donk?" <laughs> like, I, think, I think that really yeah. sort of highlights exactly how yeah. good he really is, he's right? A good and I, he is a sick player. Like I, I, again, I struggled very. Very hard uh, to, mm. to to decide what my what my first, first second, place sure. pick was. It was only down to the EPL trophy in my eyes. If mm. they had come second in that one, it would have been Donk in my eyes. So yeah, like again, hell of a player, mm. hell of a player in that respect. So best veteran, best the, veteran, the older yes. guys. Now I think there's always going to be a few <laughs> obvious picks. Um, I want to give a couple of honourable mentions to guys that are towards the tail end of their career that are still going. I mean, Oscar mm. is a prime example. I think he's had a little bit more of a difficult year this time around with Sinners in comparison to the previous couple of years. Uh, there are some older guys still kicking it um, and, and still trying to make as, as much happen in the Tier 2 scene as possible. Yeah, I mean, especially in this year where it's been so youth-dominating, right, with the academy it's, teams yeah. and there have been it's so true. many young players coming through. I mean, like, like both Jim, Pat and Donk probably are in for, for, for best player of the year, even with Kadia to a certain extent, probably less or so because of his mm. like, lack of tier, tier 1 sort of presence. But you take a look at those guys, you take a look at the, a lot of the, the players within the Tier 1 space that are placing high on HLTV's rankings and it's like it's just a young man's game. So, it is. Yeah, absolutely crazy to the guys that we're about to mention for them uh, because I mean, look, it, it's very difficult speaking as a 27 year old that to maintain your form in, in CS so but who's your second then my second place is Zentaris. yeah now, I mean Zentaris has always got to be in one of these categories I mean, look, at least like, a few of them look, when you take away the top 20 or top 30 uh, uh, ranking filter on HL TV he's always up there he's, he's, al he's always, always number one he's always like number yeah. one I think he was uh, second or third to Donk and someone else if mm. I remember correctly like it wasn't like yeah. he was the dominant player like he was last year in terms of the rating itself and so again from individual performance I think the Zentaris is always going to be a guy to rely on my concern always in terms of him and picking him in these award style in, in these award situations is the fact that He's not able to translate that to trophies, which I think is a real big shame because when you're placing as high as you yeah, are in that respect, it, it, but it, then it that's does... that's why we're not putting Eternal Fire as team of the year. That's why yeah. we have to look at the best player. And unfortunately for Zantares, there's only so many pieces you can have around you, and and he carries them in every game, in every series, in every tournament. I mean, Zantares does as much as he can to press the results for Eternal Fire, and I think he's even made a comment saying, "I'm not leaving." Like, he's had offers, I'm sure, at very high degrees. He's not going anywhere. And I mean, respect to him for putting that off, right? It's I mean, just like, the taps he, into the tier two scene, basically. Yeah, it's, it's something that Whitey told me once. It's like he'd love to sort of like just sit within the UK circuit and build up the UK super team and try and find those talents that can present within the, the tier two and the tier one space. I mean, whether that's viable is obviously a question for if it ends up happening. Right now, for Eternal Fire, there are. I have some reservations about their, their future, but like okay. in terms of the performance, can't you can't doubt those numbers. Yeah, and for me, I, I there's actually two players on Apex that I was looking at of potentially being in the second category. One was Nork, the other mm. one was Jacob. Um, I think both of those guys have produced a lot this year. Um, and the reason I just edged the way of Jacob was I thought that his impact as a rifler was slightly more consistent um, than it was for Nork. I mean, we've seen him have a 1.10 rating across nearly 60 maps played on land this year. And think about the idea that Apex lost JL, uh, they got rid of Sticko. They had a change in coach. I mean, Mithar came in for, for the likes of Cuban. He's kept that consistent form with new people coming in, with, with other people coming out. And I think with the idea that he can be that consistent as a rifler that's 29 years old, I mean, 
uh, I, he can get them into to grand finals. He can put them into good land placements. I think Jacobs had a really good year and a really consistent year for Apex. Do you know what? That that's a pick I didn't even consider myself, mm. honestly. Like that, that's a very good, uh, good, good second place. I, I think. Yeah, J Jacob. It's kind of a shame as well because we were at least the Masters uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was like his chance to finally it was win, the like, chance. like like you know, an arena land style mm. trophy. I think one of like three arenas he's been in the grand finals of. Not many. So like, yeah, it, it, I, I think that honestly, that that might have been the reason, maybe for some recency bias that sent me back hmm. um, in terms of in terms of thinking about him. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree. I don't not not disagree, but like don't yeah. you know? It's a safe pick, pick. I think. Yeah. What, what's your first then? My pick probably isn't quite as safe. Um, uh, I've gone, <laughs> this is already going to be so droll. <laughs> I, I, I've gone with Jocko. Oh, from, my uh, God. From three really? <laughs> really, yeah. Why? Why? Well, because I think he's the only player that actually... Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I think he's the highest rated player that fits that sort of role of like the what, what your standard was, which is over 26. Um, uh, Except uh, uh, Haji, but that's all right. Maybe he is 26, though. Yeah, 26 or older. Oh, does 26 count? Oh. Yeah, oh of course. Well, I and think Haji, I think, is 28. Hadji's older than Jocko, 100%. Hmm. I might have to look into that one. <laughs> Bottom line is that I think Jocko's still been a very good veteran within the 3D Max looking he, for all squad. He's a good piece. I mean, yeah. I, I would definitely, for me, I wouldn't consider him as the best veteran player, but he he's a good he's a good player on their hmm. side. I mean, we always know he's got one of the best digs in the game. Um, he, he plays difficult roles. I mean, he's an entry fragger, so it's always going to be tough to, to get a lot of impact out of him. But I don't, I don't mind that. Again, I, I think it's a player out of left field that should get some credit because yeah. he's been really important into the whole project and now obviously to the signing of 3D Max. Especially in CS2, right? Because mm. that, that whole team, I think, uh, I, 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 I think that they've done so well in the Tier 2 space of becoming the they CS2 have. team, right? And, and and I think that a part of that is down to the foundations. I think the whole squad deserves credit, but in my eyes, Jocko has done that, has had that leap forward, that extra sort of press, I think, uh, which is why he takes my okay. veteran player of the year. Yeah, I mean, there's a few older guys on that team. I think Macca's over 26, Hadji's 28, Jocko as well. I mean, even Lucky's probably getting close to that mark. I think it's only exercise. It's slightly younger than everybody mm. else. For me, my best veteran player of the year, no-brainer, has to be Zantares. Um, I think he's, he's too good. He delivers too much. And the idea that I've now put him number one back-to-back -back in this category shows his impact. Like, to go from an entire year to another year, and for me... There's no one else in the conversation. That shows how much of a real superstar this guy is, that he can still deliver at 28 years old. I mean, he's been on this Eternal Fire side for, what, approaching two and a bit years now? And he still, he still bangs. He still delivers it every single time. I mean, his ratings are just incredible. 1.22 on land. They're best performer on land. They're always best performer online. I just think for Zantares, he's a, he's a gun player. And I can imagine that he'll be in the same category next year. Again, I had my reservations because he's starting to get a bit older. You Don't know? you I worry, mean, mate. <laughs> he's got another five years in him. <laughs> you, we're going to clip that and I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel just to yeah. make sure that we have he's, that on he's gonna be He's going to be a gun <laughs> for a while. I'm telling you that much. Right then. Next player category, Dwight. Most improved player of yeah. the year. Now, this, this to me, like the way that I normally categorize who I'm going to pick and why is I like to look at last year and then maybe mm. a little bit before and say, okay, were they on maybe a poor team? Were they maybe underperforming? Did they maybe not get the experience at the high rent of tier two? And then the progression. So what's your second for this pick? Yeah, I mean, well, just my, my is my whole thing is strictly from 2022 to 2023, personally. Okay, so one like, year, yeah, one year gap. So one sure. year gap is sort of just, just to let my criteria sort of just mm. go out there. Uh, so my second place pick is Poddy. <laughs> There's no way you've picked him again. I have picked him again. Really? Yeah. You reckon the last year was better than, like, th he's increased from last year to this yeah. year? Yeah, so, like, you, you think about, like, the fact that Ents Academy weren't really sort of going to the highest level events, right? They weren't playing in the same sort of capacities. And in terms of his own HLTV listings, he wasn't quite up within the uh, uh, within the higher echelons mm. of, his, of his rating impact. But that seemed to sort of, like, change, I think, over the course of the year, right? He okay. started finding a lot more consistency. Uh, the Heroes of Tomorrow event from last year was the breakout moment where we started to recognize him. Him, mm. And he sort of translated that success over the course of the year. And yeah, they weren't the biggest events in the world, right? But in terms of most improved, and again, he's only second place for my eyes. Sure. But I think that he's really, really stepped it up over the course of this year and maintained what we saw at the tail end of 2022. See, I have to disagree with that completely. Because if you stay the same form from last year, how have you improved? Well, no, no, because he started off... 
he, sorry, he ended off the last year by having that big a run really good event, and then he's and kept then, it consistently. Yeah, but, so then how's that improving? And have gone to bigger events since, right? So he's maintained that level over the course of the year. You no. don't think so? No, 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 no. I like uh, Potty knows this as well. I, I rate him really highly. I think he's a very good player. But have I seen a massive improvement from last year to this year? No. I think he's been really consistent the last two years. He's their best player on Ents Academy. I'm, I'm not denying that at all. But for me, when I look at a most improved category, the jump is not big enough. Okay. So, for my second place, I've gone with Slacks. And I think Slacks is a bit of a household name, right? I think he's a guy that we've known in the Tier 2 scene for a very long time. I look at 2021 on Sprout. He, he had a pretty good year. I'd say he, he did all right. Averaged a 1.23 rating on LAN. Now, 2022 came along, and I think we always had that conversation, especially after Alyssa Masters Espo, where for Slacks, he was a good player. He just never was that superstar Orpa. And it sort of, it almost felt like towards the tail end of the year, I think we even discussed it a little bit, that maybe kicking him from Sprout was the right idea. And then they kicked him from mm. Sprout, and it wasn't the right idea. And I, and it sort of wondered for me, what's next for Slacks? Because I think it, it could be quite tough to get a good offer. He goes over to alternate attacks from Speedy, and mate, instantly, it is like a really big jump, like a really big progression. And I think the entire year that he had on alternate attacks, he was farming in the tier two scene. He was getting to a level so much higher. I mean, just to give you an idea, online rating across 2021, 1.10 rating. 2022, 1.10. 2023, 1.20. That's a huge jump of impact on LAN and online. He, he brought... He brought alternate attacks into at least a threatening position. They were, a, they were a team and they were a core that I don't think even a lot of people thought they'll do much in Tier 2. He brought a lot. He's gone over to M80 and he's continued to bring it over there. I think this guy has had a really good year and I think he's going to cap it off really nicely by making that move to North America. I think, again, a lot of people are going to forget about the, 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 the way that the alternate attacks have handled themselves, though, because they haven't been in that prominent Tier 2 no, position, they haven't. I don't think. And, and they have at moments. I think they've been hanging around the top 40-ish and they're never a huge threat, I want to say, in Tier 2. But they're also one of those guys that can go deep and can make playoff positions. But yeah. they're not, I suppose, the, the deaf teams that we look at in Tier 2 and say, yeah, these guys are winning an event. Yeah, perhaps that's why he flew underneath my radar, mm. perhaps. I mean, look, I, again, credit to him I I in terms of those numbers because I think that there's, there's a lot of players that have made some vast improvements over yeah, the course he, of the year. Yeah, he, so. he stepped up massively. And, and going back to his, his home region in the German scene as well. Yeah. Well, my first pick, and this might also be a little bit left field, okay. uh, I've gone with uh, Dillardes from Nine Pandas. Oh, do you know what? It's actually not a bad one. I think yeah. he's had a really good year. Oh, yeah, no, hell, hell of a year. I mean, I, I was taking a look back at his 2022 because like, mm. he only recently entered my periphery because we were covering the CCT Online mm. finals. When Nine Pandas and, played. And, and when sure. Nine Pandas played, they made that top four run. And, and even at the tail end of the year, right, they've won that Parry Please event, which mm. was a bit of a shock to everybody. Uh, uh, they've made top three in ESCA Advanced in the last season. Yeah. Uh, not the current season that's finishing up now, the, the one before. One before. Yep. But, like, that. that that's still impressive for a team that really wasn't well known and for a player that no one was even thinking about mm. in 2022. So for him to go on being one of the top rated players and, and, and within the team in 2023 and to be able to go from basically almost nothing in 2022 from, from, from where he is now, mm. I, I think that it's a hell of a way for Nine Pandas to cap off the year. It's a hell of a player that's, uh, that's capped off the year in that respect. I, I, I think he's been stellar uh, in terms of yeah. most improved. It was funny, actually, because obviously I just came back from a, a UK land event and Bisco, the, the coach of, of Verdant, actually we're, was kind of talking about some of the teams that they played in the ESCA Advance. We were talking about Nine Pandas, and there was mm. quite a group of us. Regan was there as well, and, and rest from the K10 side, and we were all pointing at Dillardes saying, you know, man, this <laughs> this guy's this guy's pretty good. Um, mm. Again, he's a, he's a guy that I think only because Nine Pandas have just reached at least a somewhat decent level in Tier 2, people are going to see, but he had a really good year. Um, so yeah. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you've gone that sort of direction, because it's nice he's, to see he's players He's glad like I haven't that. trolled his picks again. No, no, no you've, you've done well this time. I mean, for me, I've gone with Matty's, actually, that's just made the call mm. up to, to Fnatic. And I think the reason for that is, funny enough, I've actually played Matty's uh, in officials before. Man is crisp. Man is a really hard hitter. And we casted him on Enterprise back in 2021. I didn't think much of him whatsoever. No. And I think there, there was a lot of the guys, the E-Live and, and sort of, the, the guys around that sort of Czech and Slovakian sort of region, where it's like, ah, they're okay. Move on. Like, there's always someone else that we can talk about. Goes into 2022, goes from Enterprise to Sampy, and again, it's, it's okay. Averages a 1.11 rating online. His land performances are pretty good, but it's mainly against the local competition. And then he comes in 2023, and something changes. I don't know if it's if it's a work ethic, if it's maybe the comfortability of the system, if it's maybe the roster changes that Sampy made, but he's gone from averaging a 1.11 rating online 
to 1.22 and across double the amount of maps played online from last year to this year on LAN 40 maps played 1.24 rating and he's just made the jump to Fnatic I think it's a prime example to show that there's a progression to be made yeah, I mean, I was I was umming and ahhing Matty's as part of mm. my shortlist. Uh, it was part. Of, it was a, a, I think a five pl- person shortlist. He was on Matty, there. Matty's was on there. Yeah. I think that my concern when it came to rating Matty's here is the fact that uh, Sampy never really went all that deep. No, they never did in, in a lot no. of their tournaments. And my concern is that that some of those stats might not be. Um, fully representative of a top it's, end sort of like position. It's very true. At the same time, you compare him to everybody else on the team, and I think it's very similar to Zantares on Eternal Fire. There was one insanely good player, and then everybody else, unfortunately. And and I think the idea that he was able to push them into some deeper runs, obviously not the deepest of runs, and not that consistently. I think his performance has just stepped up tenfold and I'm really impressed with his year and I, and I really hope that he's able to translate some of those results into Fnatic because that's going to have to be a, a huge t- challenge for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a hell of a step up, right? It's not like he's gone from like a top tier two team into into Fnatic, right? He's gone yeah, from a very sort from of... from middle of the pack. Middle of the ends. pack. So I, I think it's going to sure. be a tough task for him. I think if he can maintain his sort of like decency, then there's mm. a chance in which he might end up landing on a top tier two team within 2024. I mean, that jump, we, we would even say, normally you see those guys maybe not go to like a Sinners or something like that but mm. somewhere around that sort of region just to get the taste of what it's like in top 30, top 40, and then jump up. I mean, the jump from Sampy to Fnatic is a huge jump. Right, well, now time for the big player award. Best player yeah. overall. I mean, I, to me, it was really obvious. I, okay. I really didn't struggle with this whatsoever. Well, my philosophy was that if I have to pick one of the players from like the, the, the one of the last three categories, then it's got to be one of those, like one of that six, You'd essentially. Think. You would think. Um, uh, so, obviously, my picks are going to be very similar to what we saw mm. uh, a little bit earlier on today. So, my second place um, probably is Jocko. Um, really? For yeah. best player of the year? Yeah. That, well, <laughs> That's like you another like Pepsor it. moment. Well, look, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that, that Man one, won Alyssa Masters Espo. Yeah, best player. <laughs> that, that one didn't age well, I will admit. <laughs> <that> respect. <laughs> um, and look, at least he hasn't taken first place, I think. Uh, which, which, in my eyes, it's like... I think, again, Jocko's a really good player, and he's played very well this year. But when I look at best player of the year, he, he's just not in the conversation. And, and maybe it comes down to the roles. Again, he's not in star roles. Um, yeah. That's 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 my thoughts on it. I mean, I've already made my case with yeah. in terms of in terms yeah. of best veteran. So that that that's the way that sure. I sort of see things. So what's your second? Place? My second has to be Zantares. I think just to to bang on it, he was my first for best player of the year last year, and I think I was umming and ahhing whether it's going to be first or second. Um, I think the difference between Zantares is that. To make that first jump, um, we needed to see just that little bit more because mm. there is a, there's obviously a, a very hard hitter that's in that first category for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I again, I sort of edge out Jim Pat over uh, over best Dom, player in the year, best player of the year. Um. So you, so I mean, look, it's intriguing because I think both of those guys aren't star players at all. They're a little bit more supportive pieces, yeah. more anchor players. I mean, but the fact of the matter is, is that they have been like top rated or they've had top rated positions within their teams, right? Mm. And 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 again, for me, it's sort of a case that can I rate Donk? As best player, if 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 he's only second place in my category for for, for best youngster, absolutely, you know? I mean, absolutely, mate. I I looked at this one before before I even went on HLTV, before I even looked at any stats. I know it's going to be Donkin Zantaras because it just always is. Uh, for me, Donk is my first, obviously. And okay, just to give you an idea, across this year, highest rating in the world on HLTV, most kills per round, the highest multi kill round percentage. So every two rounds, he at least gets a multi-kill. I mean, it's a fairly high number, and his impact rating is number one in the world. So you've got four categories, which is well, what I would say is defining a star player, and he's number one in all of those categories. Yeah, look, c- certainly it's a good pick, right? But I also look at the way that, that Jim Pat has, has won that, that Pro League, and again, it's that sort of... But it's not, the he didn't win track. the Pro League. And, but he was a part of it, though. He, he was. was. He was a stellar part of it as well, I think. So... I, I, I think the achievements that, that a team and, and, and a player... But that's not best that player! Team, but th- th- that is, though. Like, no, it's you know, not. At the end of the day, if you get a trophy, then that's that that's indicative of your achievements. But, but you, you could so. be playing poorly in that entire... T- you could be getting carried the whole way. 
I mean, certainly that's the case, but I don't think Jim Pat was. No, I'm not saying that he was. But if you're basing it off of the idea that you just won in a tournament... Well, no, it's, it's a factor involved in that. And I take a look at how he's had over the year. I take yeah. a look at the rise that he's had. Everyone was talking about Jim Pat before they were talking about Donk. And there's a good reason for that. And he's, I, I, and, and in my eyes, I think he's done enough just to edge it out. Again, it's a very, very tight sort of position. Oh, yeah. Very, right, very rain tight. it back in, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I said that at the start, <laughs> right? Like, that's what no, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't buy on that one. But, All right. um, yeah. Okay. Let's 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 move on to the next category. Best match. Now, I think mm. a lot of the time we normally go with matches either we casted or matches that we watched. For me, I think emotion is a really important part for best match. And it might not just be the impact on the scene or the impact in a certain yeah. tournament, but for me, like just for me, that that's where I've gone with this sort of category. Yeah. So what's your second Best match of the year. So mine was actually one that we did cast. Okay. It was uh, Preezy and Payne at the CCT Online Finals. Okay. Um, uh, and, and this is obviously going to be a very subjective sort of uh, thing because like it, it depends really on, on how we sort of view the match. Mm. You mentioned. Um, for, for me, I, I think it was a very good way for, for Preezy to, to, to show exactly what they had uh, achieved within the foundations that they had established alongside the new roster change that they had made yeah. during that week, right? Because you remember that in CCT, we were sort of questioning how is Roy going to fit into the roster? Mm. How are they going to do well? And obviously, you had an underdog run for, for Payne as well. Because I remember we came into that tournament thinking that it was going to be Big and Alpha O That's being right, the two teams yep. in the grand finals. But Preezy were able to beat out, I believe it was Big yep. during the upper bracket. And then Payne obviously made the run through mm. and, 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 and came through the lower bracket as well. I don't think they beat Alpha O directly. No, they, they no, I don't think so. No, but the, but the point is, is that I think that they in lost terms to Anonymo, of, didn't they? That's yeah, they that that is out. that that's correct. Yeah, but I think Payne actually did beat Anonymo, so they yeah. had that they had that third place run, and then they made it to the grand finals mm. to qualify for CCT Global Finals. So in terms of like two significant sure. underdogs that I think are setting up a very uh, uh, significant uh, like uh, run through to, to to the next year in terms of being established squads. Obviously, Payne aren't exactly a European team, so mm. it's like that's the reason why it's in second place for me because it's not like a a, a, a full sort of like a European matchup. Yeah, but uh, I, I I think that was a, a very good sort of case study for what we can okay. see in the future. Well, my second best match of the year is a little bit troll in the way that it's actually two matches at the same time. The reason for that is because there was an A stream going on and there was a B stream going on at the exact same time. And it's actually the opening couple of games at the RMR into the breach versus Na'Vi on the main screen and Viperio versus Fnatic <laughs> out on the second screen. <laughs> and and I, I think you, you have to reflect on the idea everyone in the UK scene is going to be watching out for this kind of game, right? right. Watching out to see how the UK teams go. I think you might want to put those on. Yeah, real true. Quick. Just, just, just know, for a little bit. Just just for a little I, bit. I wonder if my UK flag is around here somewhere that I wore. Uh, it is down yeah. there, but I can't reach it. At the but moment, anyway, so. I, I think the the idea both games are on at the exact <laughs> same time. <laughs> So um, I, I can't take you seriously. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it off after this. Uh, for Into the Breach, they came back from 4-11 down. They pushed it to overtime. I mean, Into the Breach pushing Na'Vi, the number four team in the world, to overtime. And then Viperio were up 14-11 versus Fnatic. The, the plucky underdogs in Viperio are 80th on HLTV against Amezzi's Fnatic. And then Giraffe ends up dropping, what, 43 kills. He was the best player in the server on that game. And I think across the board, that to me was just a really high emotion to kind of be like Into the Breach and Viperio have just taken Na'Vi and Fnatic to overtime in the opening best of ones at the RMR. Yeah, I mean, I'm sort of... Because I was considering some of the ITB matches um, in... There's, again, a, there's in, a few in, in, that you in can pick from list. in the RMR. I didn't want to be too UK biased and I would have gone for one of the best of threes, I think. Um, uh, if, if I was to pick into ITB, mm. like maybe the something problem like... there is none of them were really that threatening. Like the, the ones that even qualified them to the major against, I think it was Bait, were just yeah. kind of quite comfortable. It was only the the later stages, but just for me, I remember sitting there. I, I think we even had like the Discord um, party. What do they call the watch parties going yeah. on? And everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's gonna happen! Both teams are gonna upset, <laughs> and both teams got really close to doing so." So that to me is the best match of the year: A stream and B stream together. I mean, it's best matches. Of the it, year. it is. It is. It you, is. You, you'd say it was a full troll. So. If, if if it was if it was at different times in the day, I wouldn't have picked two. It was mm. just the idea that I remember having both streams on at the same time and, and watching and praying for both. Fair enough. Well, I've gone a little bit more sensible with my picks. Um, uh, and my first place, especially, was a, a land match from okay. uh, a ESL Challenger Melbourne. It was the grand finals between Bad News Eagles and Movistar Riders, mm. um, which ended up being a lot closer than I thought it would be. We saw a little bit more of that Movistar that we saw from Valencia last year. Remember? 
that whole yeah, yeah. you know hometown hero sure. run, which translated into ESL. Uh, oh, sorry, I am Cologne. Yep. Um, and 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 I sort of saw that whole matchup and how BNE put up a respectable fight. It didn't end up two zero, so it wasn't like a a full on best of three. But I thought that there were some really good moments, some sick clutch, some sick clutch attempts as mm. well. Like a very exciting matchup that I think could really. Um, I mean, if these two teams are playing in their prime in that sort of match all the time, yeah. then it would have been, I think, a, be a, a, a case study for the best of the Tier 2 scene. Yeah, well, for me, I mean, I'm going to go with a B&E game as well, because I feel like, again, especially on LAN, they're always quite thrilling. Mm. I'm going to go with the Bad News Eagles versus FaZe, uh, which was the qualification game at the RMR. Yes. 16-10 um, to 10 out of map number one of Inferno, 16-14. Well, it's actually 15-14. Rigon is in the apartments, 1v2, wins yeah. the clutch to go 16-14. And I, I think when you, whenever you get... A, I mean, we've seen it quite a few times, especially on land, FaZe versus b &E. it's just It's just clutch after clutch. It's just impact play after impact play. And and I think the idea that you clutch a 1v2 and you can just see the b &E guys just getting so pumped, so mm -hmm. excited. They know that they've done it again. And that game, to me, was just a just a sick game. Just a really cool one to cap off the RMR run for them. I mean, it could be put in the shortlist for, for upset of the year, which we'll no, get to No, no, no. You know, They've so. done it before! I, 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 I. <laughs> They've done it many times before! Yeah, fair play, actually. No, that, that is a good point. Okay, fine. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from... Actually, we have got biggest upset of the year next. Sure. Well, perhaps we can dive a little bit more in depth into, into that one. Obviously, this being a Tier 2 team that's upset a Tier 1 mm. team within some sort of uh, uh, like more, Tier I would 1 say, event. I would say a lot of the time the land capacity always means more as well, especially mm. if it's BO3s and especially if it's like an elimination game or anything like that. It, it sort of it bides a little bit more to that whole upset. Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of land capacity, I mean, both mine have been on land, and particularly they were during the, the Blast Major cycle. Yep. Um, uh, so my one second place, <laughs> uh, one of yours yeah, is. Not okay. the other. All right, well, both of mine are from, uh, first of mine is from the Blast uh, RMR, um, uh, which was nine beating Vitality in that uh, in that three zero run, right? I mean, yeah, it's one of those cases where Vitality definitely showed themselves as, as the strongest team in True. the world later. Obviously, yeah. at the time it probably wasn't as huge, mm. but I think that given historical context and the fact that Vitality were number one team towards the very end of CS:GO, really shows what Nine were able to achieve in terms of that one event. Now, I obviously, can accept that one. You know, it, it, it was it was a hell of a match, and again, they went three zero in I that Swiss stage. That one, yeah. So, and and for a team as well that had been building up so much hype as well about being one of the, the the top squads within the tier two space at that time i, I think it's a, a, an achievement that's also contextualized by a lot of great history yeah i think for me especially when you get like the 2-0 games i always feel like it brings it down slightly because even mm. if you lose you get another lifeline but you are right i mean for nine that's a huge victory two best of ones back to back going to a best of three and um, beat the likes of Fnatic. for me i'm actually going to go to one that was really recent and it's going to be harvu at Alyssa masters espo of beating <laughs> gamer legion in yeah. the best of three now at the time harvu was ranked 127th in the world on hltv and to their credit they did just be ends in a best of one but there's two ways of looking at it it's a best of one online against Ents with a new in-game leader. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, maybe that that's sort of one of those games where you can you can look at it from the Harvu side and say, yeah, they can get away with upsetting in a best of one. But the idea that coming into this event, they had four games on HLTV back-to-back, all losses, not even a single map victory. They are losing to everyone. Harvu had a really rough year. Th yeah. This has been a tough year for Harvu. And and they've got to think to themselves, right, just make it competitive. Just just try and go out there. I mean, Slowey had some great takes in the article just saying, yeah, we don't give a fuck. Like, we're just, <laughs> we're coming here to play. We're coming here to win. And the idea that Harvu was never in the top 50 on HLTV for any portion of this year, that they're able to beat Game of Legion in a best of three, not only to just win, but to then go to the stage. That is a massive achievement for Harvu. Yeah, I mean, in terms of underdog runs in the tournaments, I mean, certainly Harvu, in terms of ranking yeah. like, in, in versus massive. the rest of the uh, rest of the field, it, it was a massive mm. sort of victory for them. Um, we talked, obviously, about, like, the uh, during that event, we talked about, like, the whole hometown hero sort yeah. of thing, and the fact that they were the only fully finished team. Yeah. I think the only finished players in the tournament, I think. Because um, Enns didn't have anybody on their... No, you only. I was going to say saw, but then obviously. He's yeah, not no, there he's either. not not no. not there either. So yeah, I mean, in in terms of that, like you had. Well, yeah, Jim Pat. Oh yeah, Jim Pat. Of course, yeah. Oh, man, how did I forget? But that? he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just forget about it. <laughs> oh yeah, best player of the year. Just forgot. <laughs> 
I mean, to be fair, it's, it's very easy to forget that Mouse were even in that tournament. Yeah, so, you know, very like, true. Just, you know, just saying. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like it, the, the hometown hero thing obviously definitely helped Harvey. It was a shame it didn't quite happen on the stage, though. And I, I don't I think, think you can expect it to, though. I mean, you can upset one game, but to go even further, I think everyone thought that was going to yeah. be a bit of a stretch. I mean, thank you for Map 3. They were down 4-10. to 10. They ended up winning nine rounds in a row. To even, they probably shouldn't have even been at the stage. So, yeah. Lovely. Cheers, Joe. Has that uh, gone out on the stream? We'll uh, keep going. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll just keep going. We'll just <laughs> pretend that that didn't happen. We'll, um, we'll what's your number one? Magic. I feel like our number one has to be the same. Um, is it from the major? Yeah. Uh, is it Game of Legion Heroic? Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the greatest tier two runs in, in, in recent history at the very least. I want to say I, of, all, of, of all the it, tier two space. Uh, yeah, I think if you would seriously have to look really deep. I think in a major cycle, it has to be the deepest one. Mm. Um, and, and the biggest upset in a semi-final against Heroic, where I think a lot of people really thought Heroic were going to win that game. And yeah. that was the chance for them to maybe even win the major. I mean, to go down to Game of Legion and to not go down against Vitality, I think, was uh, was a shock to everybody. Yeah, because remember, at the, at the playoff position, we had Game of Legion and Monty uh, in the quarterfinals, right? And so yeah. um, we kind of looked at that match saying that could be like a very decent battle, but the, the winner's probably going to go on to face Heroic and probably going to get smashed out. And yep, then you'd think so. Game of Legion went so far as to not only do that, they went on to take on Heroic, give it a very very good fight and then win it to make the grand finals which look it, it, if you want to talk from a tier one perspective i mean obviously vitality were able to 2-0 them out of the grand finals but yeah. in terms of like the tier two deepest run um and uh you know the greatest upset uh in in it's a, the, a tier it, one tournament I, like, I, yeah i i, yeah. I think I, I didn't even really need to look at any other games yeah, I, no. I, you probably won't even get another one like that in that sort of context in that sort of scenario i mean both teams, I think, probably could have closed in two. Map one and map two was really competitive. There wasn't much in it. And then map three goes to Mirage, and Game of Legion just stomp. I mean, yeah. Emma had a really good series. I think that was the, the kind of series, and that was the playoff run that kind of probably brought Na'Vi's attention over uh, yeah. to see what he was going to be made of. So I'm glad that we've at least had the, the best upset of the year, and we didn't go bloody Game of Legion versus G2 in the RMR. Guilty was in CCD. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Now, team of the year, I yes. think this, the, the thing that can sometimes be tough about this is categorizing at what point does a tier two team become a tier one team? Yeah. And as well, do you look at consistency or do you look at best placements? Because I think there's a few yeah. teams in tier two that have won quite a bit but have also been really inconsistent. So this is a this is a tough category for me. Yeah, same as well. I mean, I had to think of a lot of different angles. Um, I was going to just basically do the easy thing and pick Monty, but I don't think they really are a Tier 2 team at the moment. I think they're much more within the Tier 1 landscape because... See, I I would say that to an extent, but they still have to qualify to a lot of those. Like, they're not in the mm. partner system. They have to qualify. The world ranking obviously helps them in a few times, but there's a few, uh, quite a few Tier 1 events that they actually have to go through the online EU qualifiers and... I mean, look, again, it, it's very, as you said before, it depends on how you define yeah, tier one and tier two. It's not like sure. it's a completely solidified, like, right, mm. this is the point, and then now you're tier yeah, two you and never you're know. tier yeah. one. So for me, I excluded Monty from my particular yeah, prediction. Sure. So to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more difficult from my personal perspective, because I love to have a challenge, as we've, as we've discussed over the course of many different awards. Honorable mention, though, I did want to give a, a, a shout out to 3 Max on Looking for Org. Um, because uh, of the way yeah. that they had their tier two, uh, their, their CS2 dominance. The reason I why agree. they didn't make I my pick agree. was yeah. because it was just in CS2. Definitely. Okay? Their, so. their, their CS2 um, sort of coming out, really, and, and being able to put results up on the board came really quickly. So yeah. it's a very good honourable mention. And, and I'm going to be really keen to see, could they be in the category or contention of best team of the year next year? Because mm. their, their CS2 rise has been quite high. Well, a rise that we also saw this year, and this might be a left field pick, depending on how you see things, sure. is, uh, is one win. Um, uh, really? I, I, I okay. looked at them because he, here's the thing, mm. right? One win actually have had a bit of a sleepy year, right? So they've had uh, two A-tier titles in Bet Boom Freedom and one. CCT Online, Online Finals three, number three. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's like you wouldn't have expected one win to really sort of uh, do much in, in that respect. But sure. I think that they, they brought in some very good pieces, particularly the signing of Boomich, which I mm. think leveled up the team overall. We actually directly, I think, led to their uh, their, their bet boom victory. Um, and, and, and they've been able to sort of take a number of uh, deeper level uh, deeper runs in the lower level B tier events, the CCT Cups. Um, I think a couple of titles are also in there as well. So they've actually had, again, probably not the most... Uh, uh, significant year in terms sure. of just pure like okay well this is what mm. th th this is a top end a tier two team but and, and probably that's the reason why they're not first place but yeah. i think it deserves a mention in second I, I mean i look at it from one win and think 
we, we obviously um, saw them at the Road to Rio Araman. They came in quite close. I think they had to beat Cloud9, what, to qualify to the major. And then, mm. obviously, in Paris, it was kind of the similar thing. I think that's maybe a factor for me why I wouldn't go on the one-win side is that they haven't shown the land results. They haven't in qualified to the important events. Yeah, they've had, they actually have won quite a few events this year. There's no denying that whatsoever. My second team is Apex. And I think the reason I've gone Apex is they're just too damn consistent. Um, yeah. Top four at the major... You go, I am Cologne, which, okay, world ranking invite. Um, Gamers 8, okay, invite. What about EPL? They had to win ECL to get there. So it's not like, oh, you just got a free pass into EPL. I am Sydney, they came through the close qualifier. So that's two events back-to-back where you literally have to qualify to get there. Look at it, um, Alyssa Masters Espo made the grand final. How'd they get there? Had to win an online invitational. So we're talking about three major LAN events this year for Apex where all of their attendance has come off of the back of qualification and those non-easy pathways. I mean, only last week they just qualified for ESL Challenger Atlanta, which is only going to happen in a few days. It's this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it depends on... Well, hopefully we'll get this out tomorrow from recording. Of, as <laughs> of when we're recording this, ESL Challenger Atlanta. But yeah, they qualified for that. So yeah. the idea that... They're not just getting free passes into these events. They're putting on some decent placings. They made the grand final in Espo. They've played in six grand finals. They've won three of them. Um, from June and July on HLTV, they were within the top 10. And all of uh, from that point onwards, they haven't gone any further than 23rd on HLTV since May. So from May to what, December? Staying within top 25 is really consistent for me. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very good pick, a very solid pick in my mm. eyes, um, for second place especially. I mean, it, it could even be, in my particular rule set, an, an argument to, to make it within my top two. And I guess probably, in my case, it would also be a decent honourable mention. But there was one team that I think stood out to me the most okay. um, uh, in terms of just raw, not only consistency, but also consistency to win titles. And that has to be the Spirit Academy core you were pick to into Spirit team, yeah. whatever, you know, the, the, the current team that we have now mm. that just won Bet Boom Dutcher. Seven final, four titles in seven finals over the course of their runs in those CCT Cups. Uh, the very good uh, deep run at Thunder Peak, and of course, Bet Boom Dutcher only a, a few days ago, as of when we're recording this, with that title victory that we've already mentioned that's been so frivolous. And, and it's like that core of players, I think, is my personal team, again, excluding the likes of Monty, yep. my personal team, my, my top team of the year. I think the only thing I struggle with that is that look at how late in the year it happened. I, like, I'm sure we could possibly sit here next year and say yeah for sure spirit best team of the year but for me when we when we kind of look at an entire year picture they made the roster changes what sixth month seventh month of the year so we've only really seen the changes what four months to five months max i mean that's the thing though because that's why i say the core of academy and spirit yeah, but they didn't do anything so, beforehand well i mean the, the, the academy side no, was able to no. b- before the summer summer break yeah. they, they were able to start those achievements within Come the cct no, no, no. you don't think no, so no, no, no. they they did a little bit they did a little bit they didn't do much you can't compare that to any high-end tier two team i think i can Really? All right, back it up with results. All what, right. did, what did they win under Spirit Academy? Give me a second and I will say so, yeah, You know, you have to look. I have to. That's the thing, because I was only prepared to give you like, a, no, a no, brief no. summary. So I will bring you a little bit of, of that okay. very, very briefly. Once right, I can, okay. once my Wi-Fi starts working, sure, and I can sure. bring up the pages, right? So at the start I mean, of the, the, the year. The, there's no denying that as the Spirit team, they've had a really successful move since that roster change and a very successful move for the, the organization with success. Mm. So what have they okay. got? Well, they've got, obviously, a CCT title. Right? One. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. What they else? got uh, a top four also within CCT Lovely. as well. Okay. Yeah, then they got this ECL Challenger, uh, ECL Season 45 European second place. Not bad. Okay. Fair and enough. then that was when they got their promotion. And obviously, they were... So they won one event and made it a grand final. Well, yeah, but that's... Th- but then still... that's seven months. Like, you no, can't... It's, it's five months, actually. Okay. So, five, yeah, but then you've now got the, the break into the new team. Okay, well, they're still able... That's the thing. They, they started getting attention during that period of time. And then they the transitioned... The best team of the year? The best team of the year would be winning events constantly. Would be getting into well, decent well, placements. Well, well, who's done that? In the Tier 2 space? Like, outside yeah. of the guys that I've picked? I mean, Apex is one. Gamer Legion's another. Um, you could maybe say Saw to Ecstatic as well. You can. You You're can't... really going to put Ecstatic and Saw down as team of the year? Well... Uh, when you look at consistency and when you look at having deeper runs and being able to win events and to also stay relevant in the top 30, yes. I mean, I haven't picked them, 
I well, haven't who, picked them. Who have you picked? Well, I've picked Monty because I don't see them as a tier one team. And the reason for that, they're not involved in the part systems. Look at the look at the tournaments. Obviously, we can see here at the major and say, oh, well, they only made top eight because look at what Game of Legion and Apex are able to do. They got eliminated by Game of Legion. So that top eight placement, you lost to the team that ended up going to the grand final. Look at what happened in Sydney. They got top eight, I am Sydney. They got eliminated by Complexity, who then went on to go the entire way. Um, they won ESL Challenge at Yonkaping. They made top four at EPL this season. They had a top 12 at Cologne. They've played in nine grand finals. They've won six of them. And they've been inside of the top 20 on HLTV since May. Um, so, to me, I think they still have proved quite a lot in the land circuit. I think they've proved quite a lot on the online circuit. And I think their consistency is really key this year. Uh, again, I, I put them as a tier one team, which is why I sort of didn't put them But, that, but my, why my aren't they at every tier one event then? Like they're not I mean, look again. They they are we're very high up in the rankings. I mm. think they're still within the. Top they're in the top ten. Yeah, they're doing yeah. the top ten, right? So in my eyes, the fact that they've done that well to continue. Yeah, I mean, look, partner systems. You know, well, 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 great and all, right? But if we didn't have the partner systems in place, would Monty still be making those runs? And I have to well, say, well, they do that, struggle in the qualifications sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, certainly they they, they 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 do. But every team does that at the same time. There are some squads that really don't have a, have a great set of qualifier mm. runs in my eyes. Again, I I think the fact that they're within the top ten counts them out as a tier two team in my eyes. So if you want to put them down, so you that's so your award. At, at any any point in time, or just any time that someone's in the top ten, they're a tier one team. Well, just right now, having maintained it. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think they are on the border, and I think they're very, they're very close to that conversation that I think we had last year, or maybe even the year before with Gambit. When do you then eventually see them being that tier one team? I think for Monty, give them another what six months if they can keep this form up and they can keep putting results up in tier one. I think eventually you have to be like, yeah, they're a tier one team from that point onwards. Okay. Next award, then I believe it's the best roster, roster move. move. Now, this this is a tough one because I think there's been some really good changes, but you have to consider. A lot of things. First off, did the change make impact to the team? And how quickly did it make impact to the team? So what's your second place for the best move? Um, well, I mean, I had a number of uh, honorable mentions, honestly. Uh, okay, let's hear those first. Uh, so Nerds to Ents, I think, uh, is, a, I I is a key one. Uh, which okay. I, 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 I mean, for me, for me personally, I don't really like doing the changes of Tier 2 players into Tier 1 because I feel like that's just a cop-out. Are you going to have a bad time with my picks? I'm, I'm, <laughs> but you, you are right. Like, I'll accept them. It's just for me personally, I never look at the best roster move of the year. If we're focusing on Tier 2 teams, we've got to focus on Tier 2 teams maybe. Making changes. Not... E e equally, though, there have been a number of like tier one moves that I think have really been like impactful from the tier two space. Right again, like I said, as I said at the start of the show, like this is a, this has been a year where a lot of teams have made that call up. So I think to, to ignore those uh, or, or to leave them out, I, I think might be doing a disservice towards those players. In my humble okay, opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, let, let's hear um, let's so yeah, say the honourable again, mentions. Some honourable mentions. Obviously, Nerds to Ents. Uh, sure. Wakadia to Eternal Fire. Obviously, I love that one. See, I, yeah. I would I would put that in the top two for me. Maybe you might see it in a second. <laughs> uh, IT... Well, no, because he's <laughs> <laughs> just put the honourable mention in. So... No, for you, for oh, you. Oh, right, right, um, okay, for, for okay. For my picture, right, it's not there. My, uh, I also put uh, ITB signing Orglis Heroes uh, because of the That's run that they had yep, during the, like the, the major as well. One win to Boomage, as I mentioned before. Uh, Roy yep. to Preezy. Uh, a lot of these... Didn't... Come on! They, they, they won Best. ACC. That's an honourable mention. They've won one event, and that's an honourable mention. They look mention. doing so. That's why I get oh, that. that that's come why, on. That's why it's not in my top two. Okay, so, I, I would have ripped in so much harder. <laughs> and that's why I didn't put yeah, it down. Fair so, enough. He, he knew it was coming. My my second place, um, again, considering what we've just discussed, it probably might not be too uh, surprising. Okay. Spirit, obviously, promoting the academy team um, uh, in, into the move. team. And, 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 and look, I think it's really paid off in terms of the Bet Boom Datra event that just went down, uh, the title victory there, how good those guys have looked individually uh, on the rating performances. Yep. Like, it is a solid move, and it makes so much sense of Spirit, considering that they were so broken before the summer. Yep. No, I like that one. I can't I can't battle that one whatsoever. So my second one is actually going to be maybe one that you forget about because it was so early, and it's actually going to be Hades coming into nine. Um, think about... Oh, yeah. Well, think about the tail end of, of the year before. So I think in December of, of 2022, um, we saw Spiro getting kicked, and then they needed a new Orpa. You bring Hades forward. Within two months of him joining the team, they qualify for IEM Rio, they qualify to the RMR, and they qualify to the Blast Spring Showdown. I mean, the idea that you're making three decent qualifications within the first two months, I think, showed exactly what happened. After about March time, um, they made a grand final in, in ECL. They went, what, 3-0 and at the RMR, obviously qualified to the major. They had a top four at uh, Brazy Party, which had a few Tier 1 teams in there as well. So I think 
Obviously, we can look at it now and say, okay, this year hasn't been that great for Nine ever since the, the major and moving into the second half of the year. But to go from Spiro to Hades and to then see that impact, to me, it's got to be a really strong roster change for the team. Yeah, I mean, it's not one that I considered, honestly. And mm. I, and, 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 and maybe I think maybe because again, because it was in January. Yeah. It's so like, it was long like, ago. I think the first like two or three weeks of January January the well. 13th. January yep. 13th. So that's, yeah, the first that, yeah, couple weeks literally. of the year. So that, that's the reason why it probably mm. slipped my mind. Honestly, that's a very good pick, I have to it, say. Because it, it put nine from a contending team into tier two to now we can deliver to a tier one level. And mm. whether we can talk about the progression from that point onwards, maybe you need to say more changes need to be made, this and that. But that individual change stepped up nine. Certainly so. And I, I can't disagree, mm. uh, personally. Uh, my first place pick is another, I guess, half Academy call-up, but also similarly um, uh, an acquisition from a different team as well. And that was, of course, Mao's reforming their roster uh, with Jim Pat coming up from the team and Shuei obviously yeah. combining. And, and, and look, right, I, I know that I placed Jim Pat as player of the year, but you have to admit that a part of the reason why Mao's have done so well is also because of their IGL. Shuei has had massive impact by utilizing the pieces he's so familiar with, uh, e e implementing them into mm. a team that have not only been able to go so far as to as to win that last CSGO trophy, but also to make deeper runs in other tournaments in CS2, CAC, IEM Sydney yeah, as well. True. Like, there's very solid positions yeah, there. Yeah, again, I'm not going to look at it from my perspective because it's just a tier one team. But, I mean, those two players have obviously improved Mouse and the, mm. the results show it. For my number one, I'm going to go with your second place, which is Spirit. Um, I think adding Zontix, Art, Frost, and Donk, there's nothing that beats it. For me, it is the number one. 5th of July, they promote three players from the academy scene. And think about what Spirit were doing result-wise beforehand. Um, they went, what, 0-3 at the RMR. They yeah. went really early on, exit in Pro League. Uh, Katowice, uh, CCT Online Finals, they're, just, they're getting out early. Uh, they're, yeah. not, they're not making those deep runs. They make the roster change. They win CCT North Europe 6. They play that, um, that Dunaf party event where they won that, didn't really get challenged by anyone. Uh, they obviously won one of the qualifications in Thunderpick to get to the main event. I think the Bet Boom LAN is probably the biggest one. That's, yes, that's the, the one that sort of caps it off. I mean, 300k event came in from the closed qualifier out of all positions. Um, CCT Online Finals number two, lost to VP. They're a team that I think have, have been conflicting between Spirit and them quite a bit. Um, they just missed out on the qualification to the Blast Showdown, losing to Cloud9. Um, they lost to Big in another CCT Online um, Europe final in, in the grand final. And then top eight at Thunderpick main event, lost to Monty. Um, I think they've been really consistent. They've been in a lot of grand finals. They've proved it on LAN. I think best change of the year. Yeah, I, I put them in my top two for a good yep. reason. So, yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that. Now comes the interesting one. Yeah, look, this this is normally the one where I, I even stop tweeting about it because no one really wants to see it except for the people. Well, the no one wants to see like it if you, if you get mentioned. <laughs> if you don't get mentioned, everyone loves it. But if you get mentioned, you don't want to know. <laughs> Worst right. roster change. Yes. Now, this... This I had to do some searching for because there's there's always some really shit ones. There's always I, some ones out there that are really poor, but I, I I have to think about the ones that maybe either we were excited for and didn't deliver, mm. or that just destroyed teams. Yeah, those are the two avenues I normally look at for these kind of picks. I mean, I mean, both are my picks, and I have to say, by the way, there was a lot more good roster changes than there were bad roster changes in my. In eyes. previous years, it's been worse. Yeah. I will say, yeah, there, there's definitely. been there's been definitely fewer. Poor roster changes. Absolutely. Um, but for me, and I, I did have a similar philosophy to you, mm. um, obviously with my additions of the idea that tier two to tier one roster moves count on my awards. Okay. Um, uh, but both of mine actually ended up being for how excited I was about the move and then it ended up disappointing. When Mad got it. just sent into a false sense of security. <laughs> exactly. So my second place was uh, Neofrag to ITB. Really? Um, yeah, because I was actually really excited to see where the Neo Frag would perform mm. because we have seen him do really well on his previous team, Sinners, for example. Yeah. Uh, a key example of how well he's been able to, to, to perform as an individual. And I really thought that with ITB's new revamp roster, it was a very interesting, like, uh, uh, prospect it was mm. a very interesting angle i think of yeah. what they wanted to do post the uk squad um but then obviously you say it spends a month within the roster wasn't quite able to achieve much and then he gets kicked for well yeah we don't need to concerns. go into it but yes yeah, yes i mean true. like it, yeah. it's public knowledge at this particular stage but like their whole i, I was really excited to see what mm. Frag could do and then it just didn't end up happening. Yeah, I think that's another one for, for Into the Breach where you look at it and I don't... They, they've obviously tried a lot of different players to fill that core three to... Or eventually, it didn't end up being the core three. But um, when you lose Volt and Cypher, I think you, do, you need to make a few changes just to make it successful. 
Um, so that that's one that I didn't really consider. My my second one has got to be the Falcons going from French to, to mm. international because I think when you look at their presence at the RMR, I, I honestly believe that if Falcons had Maka and not Kenny S, they qualified for the major. I think Kenny S struggled quite a bit at that RMR. He was the lowest rated player on the team. But that was the chance, right? That was the, the idea where it was like, okay, we can get a French team to the major. You know, Heat's done it previously or at least got close into doing it. Let's try and do it under as Falcons. And it was it was one of those moments where they're one best three away from doing so. Obviously, the roster back then was MBK, Body, Kenny S, uh, Masuta and Python. They missed out on the best of three. They didn't qualify. And that was right. Let's start making a new project. You keep the likes of Body. You keep the likes of MBK. And you bring in, on paper, some really good players. We yeah. saw some great stuff from Lonks on Sprout. We saw decent success in Tier 2 for MHL when he was on AGO and when he was on Endpoint. I think last couple of years, been fairly successful at the higher end of Tier 2. And then Boris was just a madman out on Monty. So when you look at some experience pieces like that from MBK and from Body, you have to think that they're going to increase, that they're going to put up results on the board. They're going to show that they could do more than the French team. And they did less. They literally did less than what the original <laughs> team did. Yeah, that, 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 and I think that's, like, I, I mean, honestly, I personally would look at that as being potentially down for, for the most disappointing team team of the year rather than roster move, personally. Uh, that, that can be tough because I think the team changes quite quickly, uh, mm. especially when you go full French to full international. Um, but the best result was actually quite recently, which was a top eight in a CCT a Series 3 online. And it's like... If your best result is top eight in the the, the majority of like you, we should see this team making playoffs at least in CCT events. Mm. Um, I think they they barely made it in the top fifty on HLTV since making the roster change. The highest ranking they got was actually forty sixth. So I think really rough um, roster changes didn't deliver whatsoever, and then obviously players have just been picked apart pretty quickly after that. Yeah, I mean, various reasons as to why that is the case. Yeah, but, you know, like, I, I think I, just I, dis- I, disappointing. That's all I can yeah. say. Really poor roster yeah. change for me. Uh, again, I, I personally would have considered that the team, the disappointing team of the year. But yeah, yeah that, that that's by by this point. So, my first place in worst roster move of the year, and again, it's down to the disappointment, mm. was Rain Waker to Liquid. Oh, really? Yeah. I was that's the really worst roster move of the year. They yeah. didn't even give him two months. And that's what I'm saying, right? But because that's Liquid. That's not him. him. I mean, look, I, I, at the end of the day, right, the reason why he was kicked was because of the... We don't know. We, we don't know. Well, no, because they've come out and said it was because of subpar performances, right? And But they didn't even give him time. No, and, and, and I don't disagree with that particular respect. So how I mean, is that the worst roster change, then, if it's not even... Like, if they gave him six months and he didn't deliver, I could agree with it to an extent. You give a guy six weeks to go from speaking Bulgarian... Moving overseas, playing in North America with guys yeah. you've never played before, new English barrier, and you've given him six weeks to perform, and, and that's and that's why, from Liquid's perspective, it was it was a, it was a really uh, like you know a, a bad move in my eyes because like you know but who else gonna, are you going to get? I, I mean, look at the end of the day, the way I see things is that they should have given him more time. The fact they didn't give him more time, the fact that it was it was over so quickly from a player that have done so, so well. So could you say that the worst the roster move was removing him that quickly rather yeah. than the change? Yeah, because that that changes the way you look at it. If you just say it's the worst roster change, that feels like. Rain Waker went over there, did shit, okay, came fine, back. Fine. Let so, me, re- removing. removing so, that. could you add Sorry. that to Patsy as well? Or would you just keep it as just Rain Waker? Yeah, I, mean, I think, because I was... Bit, I mean, Because Patsy it's at more, least lasted a bit longer. But yeah, I mean, like, it, I, 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 the reason why I sort of put Rain Waker as the, as the man, sort of, as, as the reason why I was disappointed was because I was really excited to see whether or not he would do as well mm. in the Tier 1 environment. Because, again, I made that whole video about him and his history yeah. and how he was going from this really solid Bulgarian player that did so well within the last couple of years in Very the Tier true. 2 space. I mean, you and I have had some have d- called some great moments from him uh, on his teams in, in, in... Always been a good player. Yeah, always been a solid player, right? And I was really hoping that... And I really wanted to give him... Uh, see whether he could do that as well mm. on Liquid. But as you mentioned before, they didn't give him enough time. They didn't yeah. give him enough space. They didn't give him enough uh, you know, potential and support behind that. And, and, and I really thought that they should have done let it simmer for a little bit yeah, longer I and agree. then possibly things could have been a little bit better right? maybe, maybe, maybe I messed up the wording in terms yeah. of no, I, two I, 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 think, I think for me um, if you want results quickly you don't pick up Rain Waker you, oh, know, yeah. but you don't pick up a guy that's barely even touched the tier 1 level I mean you look at Skade you look at 500 and all the different variations I mean he basically only played a few RMRs here and there the odd LAN event I mean online and in the comfortable home turf was where we knew that he was going to be strong. And I'm sure we'll still see him at some point up at a tier one level. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he gets a second chance because I don't think he was given enough time yeah. um, in my eyes. Do you know what? Thinking of that, I've got an honourable mention. I didn't include <laughs> many of these, but um, Shocks and Smiths making uh, Namaga Esports. Now, Shocks, <laughs> Shocks lasted four months and Smiths came out of retirement, hadn't played pro in three years. He's come out of retirement and he lasted 38 days before going back to retirement. So big up to Shocks and Smith, man. That was quite funny. <laughs> Were you expecting anything less? I mean... Oh, no. But just the fact you've come out of retirement, not even given it two months and thought, yeah, I'm going back to retirement. It's like, yeah, I'm done. All right, your, your, your first pick. My, my first pick, now it's not a direct roster change, but I actually want to say the collapse of Masonic. Um, and the reason for that is they came off the back of winning Miss Games Heroes of Lufferton yeah. at the end of April. So they won that event on the 29th of April this year. Now, less than a month later, Unlay gets sold to uh, to Espionage, which is like Cabby, Iceberg, Lucky, those guys over there. Then three weeks after that, uh, Jensi gets sold to Preezy, where he's playing with, with the whole uh, mm. Roy Nikodos team that we know now. Then about three weeks after that, Torsen gets sold to Sprout Academy. And then two weeks after that, Sarah gets sold to Mao's NXT. And you had, like, again, there's two ways of looking at it. I think from an organization point of view, they probably made some decent cash selling players on. But when you've just had... Because moving into that event, it was actually quite a poor year for Masonic. Hadn't done very much yeah. at all. They come off of the back trying to prove that they're one of the best academy teams. Sarah looked really good. Gentsy was in really good form. Frostlave's playing with these younger guys. And then if you are Frostlave, you've just thought, man, we've just won an event. I've lost everyone. I'm the yeah. only player here. So after that, Masonic, they tried to bring Notan back. Uh, they brought in Prime. They brought in a couple of the Copenhagen Flames Academy guys. I think it was Flames Ascent um, in there yeah, from yeah. Hansi and Fez. But it was just never the same. Um, they really struggled. And I think they, they lost everything. They now don't even have a roster. They haven't even played an official on HLTV for three months. I think there is plans to bring a roster back in next year. But I think when you prove you're one of the best academy teams in Europe or maybe even in the world and you win a LAN and then within, what, a couple of months, everything's just gone. Yeah, I mean, I actually had Masonic shortlisted for my most disappointing team of the year for exactly the reasons that you mentioned. Oh, I can't, no, you can't do that because no, they're because, just selling players. I mean, yeah, but like, I really wanted to see if they were going to carry on that missed games thing. And the reason why I didn't pick them in the end was because obviously there is a business element to that. Sure. Right? So like, you can understand that from like the organization's mm. perspective rather than, but from a purely team perspective, I yeah. wanted to see if they could have done that again. I would have but, loved to have seen this team go for another few months just, yeah. to, just to see how it is. But I mean, Black knows, he's the coach, he's the owner, he's a bit of everything. If an offer comes around to sell players, I, I think he's even said that he wants to give them more opportunities. And, and I think the idea that all of those guys have basically, maybe not all, maybe not Gensi, to be honest, but Sierra's found good comfortability on Mao's NXT. I think Unlay's now even on Sprout Academy. He's, he's moved over there. And then uh, Torson is with him as well. So a couple of players reuniting. Okay. Right. Next category, most disappointing team of the year. I always have year. fun at this one. Oh, yeah, if we I don't do have too. the same team, something's wrong. Something's I mean, very wrong. In terms of first place, certainly. Okay. Um, uh, uh, my, my, my second place, though, I think that uh, some, some people might not agree with me on this. Sure. Respect, but I do it purely off of what we saw from them at the end of 2022 and how we hope they carry forward mm. into 2023, and that was Copenhagen Flames. Yeah. Um, because you remember, obviously, there was like uh, I think winning a lot. five titles in their last six tournaments, four of which were back-to-back. -back. Yeah. We came into 2023 and we were like, oh, man, this team, surely they're going to be a top-end squad within the Tier 2 space. And then they just kind of stumbled and, and fell and never really found. There were a couple of good runs, particularly at the Elisa tournaments. Uh, mm. uh, when they were with the organization, they had um, uh, 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 that, that one second place. And then without the organization, they had the second second place, which was then their point of disbanding. Um but I was really looking forward to seeing Copenhagen Flames carry on. And now with the fact that that team, I mean, some of the pieces have gone on to be on better squads, admittedly, but like that team, the organization going bankrupt, the fact that it wasn't able to live up to the hype, the fact that it wasn't able to qualify for the RMR and for the several other tier one uh, squad, uh, tier one uh, uh, events that they were gunning for through the qualifying process and the disappointments that they said that they felt as well during their uh, bankruptcy statement, I think makes them uh, my second place pick for, for, for worst team or most disappointing team yeah. of the year? I, I, I don't consider them because first off, I never considered them to be a threat anyway. Like I know they obviously had a really successful end of last year, but that team on paper was never really anything threatening. I mean, you had what, three IGLs, you got Rules, TMB and Bird from Sky on the same team. You had a, a good Orpa in, in Regali and then even the, the next Orpa they brought in from Farleg. I mean, you, you had some okay pieces, 
But I never looked, even at the beginning of 2023, I never thought that we would see a lot, even after those those wins towards the end of the year. So I don't consider them disappointing. They didn't even last very long. Like, as soon as the, the organization came apart, they didn't yeah. want to stay together. So if they were maybe, if they gave them themselves maybe, let's just say if the organization survived another, what, three, four months, and they kept the same roster, and the results were the same, Maybe I would to an extent, but they lasted, what, four months in 2023? And then that's when the organization said, see you later, basically. Yeah, I mean, again, in, in my eyes, that possibly could be more evidence to, to them being disappointing. Because, again, I, I like the Copenhagen Flames organization. I oh, know uh, you do. You know, uh, and, and it's... <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hide my That's why I love Freezy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, I, again, I, I, I put them down. I've made my case. And uh, sure. uh, yeah, I, I hope that I, I, I would have seen more from them before they okay. went away. Well, my, my second is actually going to be the B&E um, over to Guild Eagles. I, I had them shortlisted as well, yeah, actually. I, I think the, the, the matter is that before the Paris Major this year played in four grand finals, they obviously, we know they're very strong in RMRs. We know that they've got what it takes to qualify to the Major. But then what happens after the major? Like come that player break, I, I really haven't seen a lot from these guys. And they've mentioned it themselves. I mean, they haven't sort of hid away from, from the drama. Devil Walks talked about it. The players have talked about it. They've struggled this year. Um, and I think since since the, the player break and the end of the RMR, the only two events that these guys have won is the Res Adria League season two and three. Mm. Mate, you're beating like zero tenacity. Like you're not beating anyone decent. Yeah, you, I mean you're beating what top sixty, top eighty teams. Of course you're gonna beat them. You're not you're not playing anyone that's really good in those leagues. Yeah, I mean again, I had them shortlisted. Um, uh, I I I'm hopeful they're gonna start turning a corner though because you we would, saw you would think we we, we saw a, a decent showing during the last CCT online finals. I yeah. mean, it's not enough for by, me to. But oh, you know, so, certainly, yeah. like you know, I wouldn't. I I'm, I'm not gonna debate. We need more. You. We need yeah, more. we need to see a little bit more before we see them. I mean, but they, they've, they've talked very highly about them joining Guild now and them having all the resources that mm. Guild will now have to help support the squad. And, and Devil Walk in particular is very excited about what he's gonna have to I mean, work with. Unfortunately for Devil Walk, like uh, I know we've we've spoken many times and we've worked with him as well. I mean, it doesn't look good for him. Like, consider the idea. He joined this team at the beginning of the year. And I'm not saying that it's down to him of the, the failures, but on paper, you've got a very solid core five players. You've got a coach. You've got... I mean, the coach got added in January. The assistant coach got added in March. Where's the results? That's Nothing true. shown from it. That, that, that is We know true. that they're good at RMRs, but other than that, unfortunately, it's been a really disappointing year. And I think that for the Guild Eagles, we... we we expected a lot more from last year. We expected a lot more after seeing what they were like at the RMR. And and I think we've we've even had the conversation on the desk and on the broadcast. If these guys show what they can on LAN, they've got to get there first. Mm. And and I I actually don't know if they don't qualify to the Copenhagen uh, like to the to the major next year. Like, do we not see a disband? But do things get even rougher? Because I don't know how many more lands they're going to have a chance of qualifying to. I mean, you talk about disband and roster changes. Who do they go to, right? Because they're stuck in that cost of well, in Albania. You just, exactly, you just right? Split. You know, like it's it, it's it's a very difficult position for them to be in. You, you can't wanna... make roster changes for this team. Yeah. So the only way you do if you disband is everyone just splits off. Yeah. I mean, it it, it doesn't it doesn't look encouraging it, it, if, no. if if that is where we have to 100%. go. Hundred percent. Right? So I, I I do agree that they do have to step it up and they have to show that their recent tournament run is going to be indicative of a, of a wider corner turning mm. uh, in, in my eyes so i'm um, uh, uh, right i have a first place team okay do we okay. have the same team i don't know do we have the same team Who my first place pick is <laughs> sorry right pause tsm i picked um you why know, uh, like okay i so this, I... this is just no no this this is you getting all oversold you think so First off, you've got to remember, this is a long-term project. Before you even get into your points and counter, TSM have proved to be a long-term project. When I saw that team coming through, didn't expect anything first six months. Simple as that. The, mean, pay, the, the, the players on the paper aren't aren't strong enough to compete at the higher end of Tier 2 and oh, compete at Tier 1. I mean, th that much is obvious at this point, yeah. considering the results that we've seen, yeah. right? But but TSM made such a huge sort of, like, deal about them trying to uh, step up and, and, and be, like, a, a powerhouse within but the... But it doesn't, within it doesn't the, matter if that's true. As soon as you see the roster, that's when you should change your perspective on it. doesn't matter what TSM say and what they achieve. As soon as you see that roster, you have to think about the players that are set in front of you. 
I mean, look, that, that's one way of seeing it. I, I, I see things very differently, though. In, I, in which I, way? I, well, again, TSM are suppo- made such a big deal about trying to be like a, a powerhouse within the within the scene. They would say, we're talking to Blast, we're talking to ESL, we want to mm. be a partnered squad. Yeah. And it's like, but, if they were but a partnered we don't, But squad, we don't know what fell through. We, we don't know. They could have potentially had, on a short list... Tier one players, but but, e- but even then, right? Like as you mentioned before, the roster itself, you look at it and it's like there there are some talents involved. I think a cipher particularly, like obviously with what he did on ITB during the major, he stood up and a lot of analysts looked yeah. at him and said he's a legitimate talent. But he hasn't been performing the same way on on, on this uh, TSM roster. It's true. Um, uh, guys like like Modo, it's like what what's he really doing within this team? Is this really where? You know, is this going to be like you know fitting of, of, a, of a squad like TSM X Taz as well? They started off being the coach <laughs> of his squad and they just left instantly, yeah. right? But just to show how much faith he has in the project, it seems. Yeah. And remember, because the one on the street and what I understand as well is that he was the architect of the team. He built it. He was the one who picked out those pieces. And then for whatever reason that we, that we may or may not be aware of, mm. he, he he's gone now. So like I I, I think I TSM sound- were poised to do a lot more no, in terms no of in terms of no C- you don't think I so. do not believe that whatsoever. I'll ask you this. Give me one team in the last five years in the Tier 2 scene that have started with an international project that's done well instantly. Can't name any. Like, maybe Kingwin, to an extent. Like, even that was like Tier 1, 1.5 players all the was way that back five then. five years? I mean, probably 2015, so yeah, even longer. So, yeah. But I, to me... Starting international projects are so incredibly different. There's a lot of teams that have, have, have approached it. There's a lot of teams that have tried doing it. There's not a lot of teams that have been successful in doing it. Um, so I think starting a team from scratch is insanely hard um, rather than maybe picking up a core or picking up a team and making a few changes here and there. But yeah, I, to me, if, if, the res- if they keep the same five and the results are the same from, let's say, six to nine months from now, I would consider them as most disappointing in the team next year. But I know that that team in front of us is not going to be the team that's going to win events. And it's not going to be the team that produces results this quickly. I mean, they've been together, what, three, four months? It's not long. Mm. Okay. So, my number one is Sprout. And I don't know how you didn't choose this. I think from an organization point of view, I don't know what's happened. I think this is a fundamental collapse from an organization standpoint. I'm just going to, you know, I've got my sheet of paper here. I'm going to read you through the roster changes that Sprout have made this year. So they picked up Zello in January the 9th. They picked up an assistant coach a day later. They benched Xiphon on the 7th of February. They benched Refresh, and they brought Xiphon back three weeks later. So you bench a player, and then you bring him back. You then sign Azar on the 3rd of March in preparation for the RMR. Why didn't you sign him in January? Why didn't you sign him in December where you can actually give him some time to work with these pieces? Man hasn't played since Extreme. Man hasn't played an official in 18 months, and you want him ready for the RMR within, what, a month and a bit? I mean, it it seems ridiculous on paper. So Azar lasts, what, five weeks, six weeks? They bring Zikos as a stand-in. The assistant coach just goes. Don't know where he's gone. (laughs) Um, it just disappeared into the ether. June 1st, Alpha signed on trial. Uh, Lonks gets picked up by Falcons in June. Stair goes to Astralis. Uh, Zikon gets parted ways. He was there for, what, just over a month. Uh, they part ways with Zello. They pick up Wonderful. Finally, actually, a good signing. Finally, actually, something that, that's been able to, to produce quite a bit. Rules gets there and Spook. They, they add Alpha on a permanent basis. They bring in a new coach of Feed. Uh, and he's also helping out with the academy team. They then part ways with Alpha in the end of August, and then towards the end of October, they bring in Seajolt, which is like this guy from Thunder Flash that no one's even really heard of. Uh, Wonderful goes to Na'Vi. Not really much you can do about that. Uh, Sprout pick up Unlay from Espionage at the end of November. Xiphon's even standing in with Heroic right now. And the only event that Sprout have won this year is European Pro League Season 10. Who plays in that team? Like, who <laughs> plays in that event? Yeah, I mean... I, I just think, with how successful the team was last year, with how often... Even the Slacks team, man. Like, even even the one with, with Slacks and co that was able to make it to Alyssa Masters Espo. I think the last three months of 2022, they were staying within the top 20 on HLTV. And again, like, I know, obviously, I find it difficult to compare. If the team looks different, it's difficult to compare from team to team. 
But tell me why there's this many roster changes. Tell me why there's so many people coming in and out of this organization. I mean, from a managerial perspective, it doesn't look good. It at looks all. terrible. <laughs> there, there's not a single signing here other than maybe the wonderful where you and I can look at it and say, Ooh, this looks like good. They've gone for young, inexperienced players that no one's really heard of, and they've tried to make it work. I mean, I, I feel for Spook. I mean, uh, rules, I should say, because he's got what? Spook, Seajot, Slime, and Unlay on the team. He's not working with a Slacks, yeah. with a Xiphon, with a Lonks, with a Wonder. He's not working with players we know are kings in Tier 2, that are towards that higher end of Tier 2. And I think for Sprout, um, I've got it right here. Consistent top 30 team for all of 2022. They went 3-1 and one at the Rio RMR, so they qualified to the Major, which was about October to November time last year. They made top four at Alyssa Masters Espo. Slacks gets kicked. Unfortunately for Slacks, he's like, ah, look at your last year. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know. I look at that from Sprout and, and I, I don't know what to think. So yeah. many roster changes. So incredibly disappointing. I feel like they've gone too hard on the taking a risk kind of game, right? In terms yeah, of who, not really. In terms of, in terms of, some, of the, the, some of the players. I mean, like, not taking a risk, probably the wrong term for it, but like... They've gone cheap? Yeah, I mean... I, I would yeah. say they've looked to the future, but if you look to the future, you don't leave players for a month. You leave them for six months. Yeah, you I, leave I, them I, for I don't, nine months. I, I don't really know what's going on in terms of the internals there for, for Sprout, but it's definitely I just mean, like... I, I, on, I think, I'm not sure, again, how much we had a categorization of Sprout last time around, but I think you and I, especially with the lineup they had, they were in a conversation of being a high-end Tier 2 team, getting Tier 1 opportunities. Mm. I mean, they're getting no Tier 1 opportunities now. They're getting nothing. Yeah, I mean, look, I've always categorized them as the team that bounced back, but I will have to admit that this There's year, no th 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 this year probably later. puts that into question. Yeah. Uh, in terms really of that. disappointing. And yeah, yeah very, very, I, I have to agree. I, I, honestly, that category, as soon as I was thinking about it, five seconds I knew it was going to be Sprout. I did not even need to look for anybody else. I mean, I don't know if maybe the early year stumblings maybe like threw them off for me in terms of like even considering well, like, them. I, like uh, again, I mean, I'm I'm gonna always give give credit to Azza because I mean I'm Australian. I know what he's been able to do, and and it's not to say like oh just because I'm from Australia I'm gonna back him. Look at what he did on 100 Thieves and on Renegades. He was a very capable in-game leader who's been out of the game for a seriously long time. To bring him in. One month before the RMR is ridiculous. It's the trollest thing I think I saw at that R. Like in terms of the roster changes <laughs> mm. before the RMR, that's got to be one of the one of the worst changes just to bring yeah. someone in that early. He, he was definitely thrown in the deep end on that one. I think. And so. then think about what that confidence is. You just get. I mean, they even nearly lost to Viperio at the B, the BO3 and the O2 game at the RMR. They mm. could have very easily gone out there without even winning a game. Yeah, okay. Well, let's move on because we are a little bit pressed for time at the moment yeah. uh, because uh, we do have to be places. Um, next category is deepest run at a tier one event. Um, I mean, this this uh, this is rather than us being like, oh, I choose this one, oh, I choose this one. It's just like I want to give them credit because yeah. they, they did really well. Yeah, I think we've both got the same. Um, uh, we, what, should we, 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 we should do. We should do, right? Yeah. So I mean, is, is your second place Apex at the Major? Do you know what? It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Third, fourth at the major, three and two in challenger stage, three and one in ledger stage, beat Liquid in the quarterfinals, lost to Vitality. I think a very good run from there. Yeah, absolutely stellar run. Um, got to see Nort, got to see yeah. a bit of Jacob. Yeah. And, and Apex as well, just at the the staff at the land, by the way. Like we got to they see a little bit of those guys. They they were they were loving it. it yeah. Was great. And and for Apex as an organization, that was the few, the first like proper taste of tier one success. Oh yeah, definitely. And then they've carried forward it. Of course, you mentioned before, Elisa Masters as well. Yeah. Uh, not the first, not fully same yeah, roster. Put them as the best team of the year. So yeah. they're in the conversation of, of being very consistent this well, year. Well, there we go. Um, and I'm going to assume, and I'd be shocked if you didn't put anything other than Game of Legion also going to the Grand Finals of the Paris Major as well. I have done that one. Oh, yes. Wow. See, the, the look on your face, I'd be a little bit concerned. <laughs> yeah. there. Like, he's trolling there's, there's, there's one somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, uh, a second at the Major, three and two in Challenger stage, three and one in Ledger stage, beat Monty. The heroic one is obviously a massive result. We talked yeah. about it as the biggest upset. Went into a grand final. Yeah, you might be able to, to find another here and there of like a team doing fairly well. But at the major, top four, top two, you can't beat that. There's nah. there's nothing that's going to overcome that one. Yeah, again, probably one of the greatest tier two runs we're going to ever see. Um, at one uh, event. In, in, yeah. in, in, in I mean, event. into the bridge, Monty, Game of Legion, Apex making top eight at a major. I mean, yeah, Who if you, if you wanted coming? to go like, you know, the, the, the team, or oh, sorry, the tournament that has like the most number of tier two teams that it's have that gone one. deep, it's probably that one as well. We might make that a I don't think we'll ever year. get a major again that has that many no. tier two. Two teams no. in the playoff position. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it's, just it's mental. a one-off. Just, just a one-off. The stuff that happened there was mental, so... Yeah. Well, I've got best tournament of the year, Jay. Yes. Now, 
I've, I've categorized this in a few different things. I think the excitement value of the tournament, the prize pool, the quality of teams, the production, the mm. the importance on the scene, I think is really important as well to some of these tournaments. So what's your second of best tournament of the year in the tier two scene? Yeah, so mine was uh, ESL Challenger Young Tripping. Um, oh, so uh, quite recent then. Yeah, very recent. Okay. And, and, and obviously this has been, as we mentioned before, it's been done before Atlanta. So, I mean, if that was within the realm, I might have ended up picking this because mm. I have a feeling that Atlanta might end up being better than Young Tripping. Sure. Um, the reason why I picked Young Tripping was because ESL Challenger this year have been really leveling up their products like okay. to, to, to quite a capacity it's not just because before it, in the uh, in, in years gone by it's been also with the dreamhack opens that mm. preceded them it was always a very basic sort of like right we're going to do you know a, a show it's going to have high like little high production value yep. like um uh, qualities but there's not going to be anything special about it it's definitely like a tier two tournament for the mm. tier two scene and it won't be anything special because then there's no need to be asl challenger have actually like um over the course of the year tried to level that up a little bit in terms of specifically was the one that caught your yeah, eye. Yeah, exactly, right. In terms of the content bits, I mean, first of all, I mean, um, uh, Melbourne, obviously, that crowd was incredible. Yeah. And they really played into that. They really sort of uh, elevated the, the, the presence that the sure. audience had at that particular event. Then they had uh, Katowice as well, where they had Tech Girl, and she was going about and doing like little like silly interviews mm. with the uh, with the teams and things yeah. and getting behind their setups. And they had um, uh, a bunch of like VT packages uh, that you would use to like promote a UFC event, for instance. Okay. Um, uh, and then Yon Shipping was basically where I think they were refined it to the point where it is now and it looks so good where they had all those bits and pieces they had the walkabout of the venue as well like so, so the sort of stuff that I would have seen Republic doing if they made it to a LAN event yeah. right like and, and, and I think that's where ESL Challenger needs to be in terms of the ESL Pro Tour and the Tier 2 space itself so Yon Shipping I think deserves a shout out I'm hoping that Atlanta carries that on as well and, um, it's happening this weekend so I'll be keeping my eyes on that most certainly um, but but yeah Yon, Yon Shipping I think is the one that, that culminated at all the efforts that ESL Challenger have done this year yeah I mean uh, funny enough you mentioned Republic Republic, it unfortunately seems like the death of Republic yeah. now, which is a shame because they went two years back to back where both of us mentioned them as, yeah. as best tournament of the year. And I would have imagined that season four would have just like progressed even higher, which is such a shame because I think season two and season three were so good online. Yeah, definitely, 100%. I, 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 I always, I'm always going to be like imagining an alternative reality where they stayed in yeah, and, and, yeah. That, and they would have not only gone so far as to make season four mm. but also tried to go on to make a LAN event and honestly Definitely. I think Republic LAN would have been would have, would have basically been Yon Ping yeah. times three yeah. like it would have been amazing So, well my, my second pick is actually an event that I've just come back from uh, which is the UKIC League okay. season zero division one event and <laughs> so what what a title like, well, you've season got, you... zero division yeah, one yeah well I All played right. in Div three um, <laughs> and, and I think that there's a few ways I want to look at it. The first one is it was a real behind the summits vibe uh, for the tournament, which, to be honest, well, they're not in CS anymore. Mm. I can't think of another tournament organizer that puts on an event like I just went to. It just doesn't exist. It's just not really there. Um, maybe Pro League to an extent with some of the bits and some of the, the couch, the sort of laid back environment, but that's at like a tier one level. We're not talking at a, a tier two level yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, I know that Beyond the Summit was technically also tier one events as well because they had those yeah, tier one teams. Yeah, they did, they did, they did. Um, I, I, I think that they did it better than ESL Pro League, honestly, though. Um, just oh, in they, I loved in, Beyond, in terms of, Beyond in terms the Summit of the was a great event. Yeah, I, I mean, like, really it, the, the idea that you're hosting the whole event in somebody's house, yeah. I think, is just like such a cool um, intimate and, mm. and very like uh, authentic vibe, right? And and again, all their content output was was always stellar. Sure. Right, the shoulder stuff that they did was, yeah. was amazing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like y y UKIC. Uh, I think the 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 reason why I didn't shortlist them was mm. because it is so far down the pecking order. Um, uh, it uh, is, and, and I'll give you some maybe some more reasons why I put it up so highly. I mean, the importance for the UK scene. I mean, yeah. obviously, we're both in the UK. You've got Epic Land, you've got I Series, which a lot of people are boycotting these days. ESL Premiership's died. I series specifically, obviously, Epic Land is still being yeah, considered. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So but, to, just to make sure that no one gets that statement but, confused. But the idea that no one's really going to I series anymore, ESL Prem's dead. For Epic Land, and, and I, you know, I, I go to basically all of the Epic Lands, I really enjoy being there. For teams like a K10, like a Viperio, like a Verdon, it's difficult to get teams to Epic. It costs a lot and it's not worth it because the prize pool's just not there. So it's very difficult to weigh up. If we go to Epic Land, it's good and it's land experience, but we're not getting like our money back. It's not worth our time being there. And then what you end up finding is that the top UK teams don't really have anything to play in. So the idea that this is now an online circuit of a regular season to then go into a land finals, it fills a gap that we don't have. It fills something that the UK scene has been looking for for a really long time. So I think that's really important. Four teams on land, 
excellent. That's exactly what you want. I think format was wonderful. The one mm. thing I fucking hate about um, formats is BO1s, um, especially on LAN. I mean, we get it at Epic LAN, it's a bit different because it's BYC. There's a lot of teams. Yeah, I mean, th- th- you can't criticize numbers, yeah. it. But best of three, double Elim. You can't get a better format for a top four team. So I think that's something they hit really, really yeah. well. Um, really content driven. I think a, a massive shout out to the players that were involved. I think we had a lot of guys on the couch. We had a lot of guys that we were doing content with. And that's what you want. We want to, as a scene, right? I feel like this tournament helps progress players' careers because they get more involved in the socials. They grow their brand. And the the idea that top seven teams make their spot for next season as well um all games on hltv that's another thing we get a lot of events in the uk scene that what top fours on hltv mm. or late stages of the tournament brackets on hltv so I, I gotta be honest out of i mean i've been casting what six seven odd years now this was the most fun that i've had working a land out of any event that i've ever been to it it felt like i wasn't even working there felt like i was there to take the piss out of the players (laughs) but at the same time it's the serious nature where you are there to look at who's the best in the uk Mm. and uh, i think the idea that everyone was in the same building i just i loved it and and i can't wait to see what more uk i see has up their sleeves i mean i mentioned it on twitter that the setup looked amazing um, yeah. uh, and, and from what i saw it felt like you guys were having a really good time yeah we um, had a we had a great blast i'm kind of jealous i didn't get invited pete and so, we, come uh, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, but i i think that's something that the uk scene's been been after and i i think for you got to remember this is done by endpoint yeah. right now obviously endpoint aren't going to play in them because of, of what have you i mean the they're kind of becoming an international team now anyway so but he, well they're still called three uk but yeah. I mean. the the idea that they did that for the scene, right? They didn't do it. Like, obviously, they, they've got to maybe try and get some money out of it and the sponsors and the prac rooms and, and what have you. But this is not a tournament organizer. This is Endpoint that's putting it on for everybody else and creating this circuit, which I think is really, really great. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm getting even a bit emotional about it, talking about it now, because it's what the UK scene needed, and yeah. it's what the players needed. I mean, I'm, I, I've, I've obviously been through a number of UK leagues, and my one concern for UK, UKIC is that it doesn't go the way of some of the leagues we've had before. Well, like, hopefully the, they've the, learned the lesson. Yeah, I mean, like, like, they've got. I, I hope that, that Pete takes uh, a look at like UK Masters and, and UK GT, for example, and tries not to go down that route, yeah. because I think that that's where UKIC would really well, fall apart. Another thing is, obviously, like not that I'm in uni, but you got like the Noel, which is the, mm. the uni CS. And then, um, I don't know if you saw, Jay, but you've got UKIC, Div 1, 2, 3, and Varsity, which is all the uni teams as well. So that's another thing. So the uni teams have got more leagues to play in, and they've got mm. more of an opportunity. And I think step by step, it, it's a domino effect that the UK teams are going to get stronger. We're going to get more youngsters involved. We're going to get more up-and-coming talent. So, yeah, I, for me, second place, uh, best tournament of the year. Okay. I mean, uh, you, you've, you've talked very much and, mm. and, and said a lot of good points about it, so I'm not going to debate you there. Um, uh, I'm imagining our first place might be the same. Yeah, I think so. Miss Games, Heroes of Lifferton. Oh, my God. What an Incredible event. tournament. Incredible. Absolutely brilliant. For those of you, and I, I fear as well that people might have missed it, that it flew under the radar. Because very much so. It's not from an established tournament organizer. It's not from a, a name that everyone's going to recognize and go, ah, there you go. That's that's that T.O. And we're going to expect this and, this mm. and that from them. They're still very very new, right? I think that was their third event, um, uh, not yeah. including the qualifier. Um, so, like, I, I, I think the And first LAN. Yeah, and, and first LAN as well, right? And I remember we actually, uh, uh, they made, like, a whole documentary and, and things about like, the production of the LAN and how they were piecing it all together. It's still yet to be released publicly. Um, uh, but we've seen, um, the, obviously, the Academy scene obviously fall apart within uh, within WePlay and, and not and then not renewing the, the Academy League itself. So seeing the fact that now um, Mist Games have come in to try and fill that void, they've done a LAN event in literally the Arctic Circle mm. um, with these amazing backdrops and these amazing viewpoints. We put a lot of time aside for content. And oh, I should also add, by the way, th- we did work this event, yeah. just, just, to, just to make sure the disclaimers are out there. Um, the, the amount of effort that was put behind creating such a unique event, mm. I think, has got to be recognized. And I think it's a good foundation to build from going forward. And I'm really, really hopeful they come back very, very soon. Yeah. Um, because uh, I, I think the Lufferton was just stellar. And Absolutely I- stellar. And probably not only mo- not only our pick the best tournament of the year, I'd say that if you wanted to take a look at the entire calendar, most underrated tournament. I, I agree 100%. And one thing that I, I sort of offer your points that caught my 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 ears and, and the reason why I selected as well, unique tournament. There's nothing like this. You are literally in the north of Norway in a fishing village. You you don't run CS events there. You, 
people haven't run CS events in locations like that. So I think the location was something very different to everyone. Mm. I think the idea that it was six academy teams, which is great, it's not just two, it's not just a show match, not top four, but six academy teams went out there, five BO3s and one a day. I mean, that's something, again, not many tournament operators do that. They go, right, we're going to do a best of one, maybe another best of one, two BO3s, and then two BO3s the next day. And it, and it sort of it, it packs in the schedule. It packs up all the, the stream time and the game time. The idea that you have one best of three per day gave room for the activities. I know the Ents Academy guys were getting involved in a lot of the content stuff. And for the, you got to remember, there was a lot of guys that hadn't even been on a flight before. Mm. Guys that just... They've never left their own town, never left their own country, and they're going to Norway where they're going in the sauna and they're swimming in the ocean and they're doing fishing and just stuff that just seems wild. That We're not on holiday, but we're here for a CS event. But yeah, mm. we're just doing some extras on the side. Yeah, I mean, I have because uh, I one of the pieces of the content that came out of that event was my bartender interview series where yeah. I sat down with a bunch of people, we poured them a drink, and we just had a chat, right? Well, and Whitey had this really key point. It's like, it's so surreal, the idea that we're in this place, a place that I never thought I'd be in for a vacation, mm. let alone coming here to do what yep. I'm actually doing, which is playing a CS tournament. And, and for him to say, like, it's... It's and and, and 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 him as a coach, by the way, I massively rate him. He's saying like all these things, like it's less about the results and more about the experience for us and the fact that we've come here, we've got this opportunity, we've done as as well as we have, right? And I think that that mindset from him really demonstrates what Lufferton was all about. Yeah, why um, he's been PR trained to not get fired. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> The point still stands, yeah. though, right? Like again, I, I, I am looking forward to the next one, and I'm hoping it comes about sooner rather than later. I, I was and, and such it, a big it, fan of it. It fills, it fills the gap on the academy teams. I think they've got it quite tough right now, where without we play, there actually isn't a lot for them to play in. Um, you've got the odd online cups. I mean, lands feel like they're they're almost non-existent for academy teams right now. So. It was a great opportunity to have some new characters, to see some new faces, to see guys like Zip playing out on a, on Australis Talent, playing with some youngsters. And and overall, uh, I think, no, uh, to me, there isn't much between UKIC and Miss Games because it's very content-driven. I think the difference is the scale was so much higher yeah. uh, for Miss Games, and, and they put up one hell of an event. All right, there you go then, Miss Games. So let, 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 let's see another one. Let's yeah, see another last one. couple of categories. Best yes. content creator of the year. Now, I've actually, I, I've actually gone for someone that isn't EU and CIS because I feel like this person has to be mentioned. Okay. But I have, like, obviously all the categories. I've tried EU and CIS the best that I can because otherwise okay. it's just too difficult to pick categories. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's too many people out there. I mean, I, I've, I've always struggled, I think, in the in the content creator department, especially for the Tier 2 creators. Mm. I always look at the Tier 1 creators. I'm always watching, you know, Richard Lewis Thorin, Last Free Nation, um, that whole sort of conglomerate, right? And that's sort of like my, my my thing personally. So I've always struggled when it comes to picking into this category. There have been a couple of guys that have really put in the, the, the hard yards over the course of the year. And and, and for me, um, even though I'm not necessarily a fan of this kind of content, but I oh, can... A great start, yeah. No, 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 right. Here's the thing, right? <laughs> I, I think there's a certain level which you have to set aside your own personal preferences to sort of see what the impact is towards sure. the greatest yeah, scene. No, and true. in that respect, I might not enjoy all of it, Jackie's uh, update videos, but the, the content that he makes in terms of his patch note stuff, very informative, very quick. And I think it has a massive amount of value to the scene as a whole. And, and the thing that I want to point out as well for, for Jackie is, man, he gets videos out so quickly. Mm. I, I can sit there and I might be scrolling on Twitter in my bed and there'll be an update and I'll be like, ah. Oh, have a look at it in the morning. The Twitter algorithm is really messing with me, by the way, because I never get his tweets. I'm told that he does like so many, like oh, uh, so uh, many, so many so stuff on his Twitter many. timeline. Yeah, yeah. So like, I never ever see it. So like, you know, What's e going e on? E Elon Musk is messing me over there, Jackie. I, I apologize on on his behalf. No, it's I, not my fault. His, his content's very good. I, I watch a lot of his stuff that he puts up. Uh, I do like the uh, the day. What is it? 179 now. With, <laughs> until I get an agent, uh, an agent. I, I did see his day over. one tweet. I didn't know he was kept. Yeah, he's done it every day. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, th I think puts on some good content. For me, I'm actually going to go with someone that's very well known in the UK scene, not very well known in the Tier 2 scene, and uh, Mefu, who does oh. the Epic LAN high and low lights. Um, I think I really enjoy his content. Obviously, I participate in a lot of the events that the, the video is made off of. He actually does some stuff himself. I know him and like Adam JC and... and Guys like that, they play this 3v3 uh, workshop maps and they make some content out of it. I think for Mefu, it, it's just a little bit more of a passion project than anything else. But he has some really good stuff. His editing quality is very high. And he's always fairly quick on getting it out from land to land. 
And everyone from the UK scene wants two things after Lamb. They want Mischief stats and they want Mefu's video. That's what they want. That's the only two things they want after an Epic Land is concluded. I mean, look, I, I, I have to admit that, that Mefu is um, he's probably a guy that slipped my mind because he doesn't post all that, no, all, not, no, all, all doesn't. that much. No. But I think the stuff that he does do is of that, that kind of it's quality, very right? Fun. It's always very good fun. good fun. Always very... Um, I, I don't know if high quality is the right word. Or at least not in the traditional sense. Yeah. It's not high quality. Um, but like... I, I I think that honestly, they're they're, they're always a good time. They're just, always good. Just, just, I, I watch them back regularly, even some of the old ones. Just to, just to, it's nostalgia. That's oh, what yeah, I, I find mean, so in, much. In terms of the memories, is a good archive yeah. as well. Just to condense all the stream footage from that weekend, and 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 and, and I'm sure that he puts in the hard yards in terms of uh, in, in in terms of discovering and curating. Uh, the, uh, the 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 clips themselves. I imagine he probably gets sent a few of them, it, but like it, yeah. it's a very different yeah. process from getting sent a bunch of footage. But it's another Making thing entirely to make it work. Make it yeah. work. And and, yeah. and as as an editor who's been like doing that myself in some of the projects that I've been taking on this year, I have to admit that Method does it incredibly well. So, who's um, number one? My number one, um, it might be a bit of a left field pick actually. He's only been doing it for a couple of months here, but yeah. it's uh, a guy called Arkex. I, I actually love his videos. I yeah. mean, I, I think I've well, actually watched every one of them. You you recommended him to me. Mm. Uh, I think it was actually on the way to to to, to Elisa. Yeah, uh, it might to, have been. We weren't talking Helsinki. about it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I I checked it out when I got back, and mm. I was looking because I remember at stuff. you looked on the phone and you just couldn't even. Do you remember that? You couldn't even yeah, see I, his his video. Yeah, that was no, really it, was, weird. it was really weird. I think it was something to do with the uh, with the the YouTube? lounge the lounge Wi-Fi. Oh, uh, so maybe actually. Th okay. That that might have been the case. But anyway, th that's by the by. I did get home. I did see some of his stuff, mm. and I have to admit that I, I think it's really good conceptually I stuff. I think it, it's similar stuff of Mefu. It is nostalgia stuff a lot of the time, looking back, reflecting but, on but stuff in the past. it's a lot less of the meme stuff that Mefu does. 100%. And a more the, like, the informative side of things yeah, in terms yeah. of... Like, he did this video where he was like, you know, the the, the teams of the 2014 Katowice Major, like, where are they now? He's like mm. talking about Titan, and it's like, oh, man, I remember when that, when yeah, that team yeah. was about. And yeah. I remember Kelly's ban, and I remember yeah, yeah. how they, they struggled and they blamed it all on, on, on Kelly's <laughs> ban. That's the reason why the, sure, the org went sure. out of business and stuff. Um, and, and, and I think that he's he's done really well in terms of his research to put together a video like that. That's not easy um, to stop. To even find clips and articles of stuff that's 2014, <laughs> 2015, they're, yeah. they're not around I mean, I mean, very look, much. I, I, again, I can speak to that firsthand mm. considering the stuff that I've been doing this year. Um, but, for, but for him, like, I... I I think that considering he's only a couple months in, he's yeah. done an incredible job at not only creating good content, but also finding the audience for mm. it. Um, I, I think that obviously presentational-wise, in terms of his like vocal output, he needs to do a little bit of, of, of work. But it's like, I'm it's the kind of thing that's going to thing that's gonna come with a time and experience, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ar Arkex, what, what a lamb. What a lamb. Yeah. Well, my number one is going to be a guy called Penguin, out of uh, all things. Um, I don't know if <laughs> not, you've not, seen... Not Bin Men Penguin. No, though. no, different one. <laughs> um... I think it's at Penguin CS2 is the the YouTube um, app. Right. Um, he's done a couple of videos, the the history of the CS:GO obsolete callouts, and it and it's basically like a a reflection in 1.6 and source of why is Moto called Moto, and it's got some really good editing quality, really good information. There's another one of un unrevealing the the secrets of CS:GO's old maps, and you basically get footage of the old Nuke. And this is how it looked before, and this is what has changed from this year to this year. Unbelievable videos. I've watched all of them. I really enjoy them. Um, so yeah, honourable mention as well to uh, to Mahone for I know North America. Mm. His last video was the the evolution of the Mirage window smoke, which blew up. Haven't seen yeah. a video since then. That was eight months ago. Come on. Yeah, I mean that was such a good video, and there's I, just I been did, nothing I, since. I, I did see that video, and I think I, I have to admit that was a hell of a like. Uh, it would have taken a while to do it, I'm sure. But yeah. eight months, Mahone, what is going on? I mean, like, you better be cooking something real good, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that, and that then uh, the and then Austin, there's there's a couple of guys. Uh, Austin does a lot of clips. I'm not. Sure. He's like a nut out here, but kind of pro in the UK uh, in the American scene, I should say. Um, and Give some really informative, very short clips on YouTube to um, to noobs and new players. Like myself. Yeah. So there you go. Well, I'm not a new player, but I'm a definitely a, a, a noob. So. Last category. Yes. Best, uh, best jersey of oh, the year. Oh, mate. There, I, there's I had always a, some good ones. I, I had a really good time flicking through this mm. one, man. Like they, they, These were some really... like This, this year especially, there have been some really cool um, uh, like yeah. jersey designs. So I mean, especially with the advent of the, the female circuit mm. as well. Some of the variations of the tier one jerseys in yep. for the female teams 
wonderful stuff. So I agree. And, and I, I do I, agree. I, one of my nominations actually is a female team. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to, well, to, to showing you off that one. So. My, uh, my second is actually Bait, um, the Ukrainian okay. organization. Um, reminds me of the Igla jerseys we had the year before with like, the whole neon. It's basically mm. just the um, like a, a darker jersey with just some really great colors um, that, are, that are coming uh, across. And I think, again, to me, my sort of style of, of jerseys is eye pop. It's something mm. that just catches your eye. And for the Bait ones, I actually really like their new jerseys this year. Yeah, I mean, I, Bait was a team that I shortlisted. Um, I didn't uh, like their old one with the, the hook and the, the aims. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. The, the new one's much better. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I have to agree with that. Uh, yeah, uh, sick stuff. Um, for me, my second place pick was uh, a team that I guarantee no one else has heard of. It's called the Laser Cats. Yeah. Um, they, I, do you know what? I have seen their jerseys. Actually, it's like, really good. It's like pink and purple sort yeah. of like blend and like it fades between one color it is, it's, it's like good. purple this side pink this side and it sort of just merges and it's i don't know what it is because like it's not usually my type of color scheme but i just, just feel works. like it vibes it works so yeah. well and and it's a shame that it never actually gets seen all that often because it, i think it is a sick jersey it's funny because i actually do know the team as well because toxic plays there who obviously used yeah. to play in the the whole project x crazy kind of team so i know him i know that he plays there but i think to the, the average joe not many people are going to know the the mm. laser cats that are out there on hltv but they have a sick jersey no yeah denying definitely 100 percent my number one is actually Spirit. Um, they've got a new design. They've got half of the shirts completely black, and the other is the silver white uh, dragons. Yeah. Man, it is clean. It is really clean because it's very simple, but it just it just looks elegant. So yeah, I really like the uh, yeah the, the Spirit one. Again, I also shortlisted Spirit as well. It's, my it's nice. my top pick had to go to an underdog because I have to say, um, the Guild Eagles jersey is very underwhelming. In the, comparison, in too. comparison to the guild female uh, team jersey, really because cool. it's like really cool. I really like my dark colours, mm. um, uh, and 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 they've got like the the whole like black uh, uh, top torso area, but then the sleeves go into this purpley, darky pink sort of yep. um, uh, 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 colour as well, with all the the sponsor logos and everything really standing out, really popping out as well. I, I think I think the ladies have shown up the lads quite quite heavily in this one, and, and I think it's such a sick jersey design. Um, and shout I, out to guild, shout out to guild, most certainly, right? It's um, yeah, well done. Yeah. <laughs> jersey of the year in my eyes alright well that wraps up uh, all of the categories mm -hmm. um, I think for anyone that's, that's still tuning in maybe uh, put down in the comments what um, what your favourite changes are and if yeah. you think that we're just chatting bollocks or if you actually agree like <laughs> Jay's troll ones normally <laughs> <laughs> but um, fourth iteration, uh, maybe we'll try and do something a little bit special for the yeah. for the fifth time. Do you know what we should do? We should follow, what we should do is we should like get all the lads in. We should get all the all of yeah, our. Yeah, I'd buddies. love to. I'd love to actually give something to the players, but I don't know how easy that's going to be able to do because that's well, like sixty we'll, trophies. We'll, we'll look maybe into for it. first. Maybe if nothing else, what I want to do is I want to get all the round table together. Yeah. And we can come to a definitive consensus on where we, can we vote. stand. We, can, we vote. can vote and we can make things yeah. happen. But that's all for next year. For this year. That's 2023 all wrapped up. Yeah, a very fun year. And uh, I think all we have to say is we'll be back next year. Indeed See ya. We will. See you later. Bye, everyone.